Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew. Welcome to Wednesday for hey a guys. very special show. We will get into that in a second. Uh, this is where we play new games on classic consoles. Uh, the Atari 2600, right, of course. And uh, you better be watching at 60 frames a second because that's what we broadcast at. And you'll be missing half the action if you're not watching at 60 Literally. frames a second. Because the Atari plays at 60 frames a second. Yeah, like it's the earliest it's, uh, consoles to do that. Uh, now it's like, no, you have to have 60 minimum. Yeah. It's like, no, this did it back in the day. 60 frames, literal frames. Um, but today we are going to be playing the retail version of Boulder Dash. Now, you have not heard about this game. I, you know nothing about it. I this thought game. we were playing Deep Stone Catacombs. <laughs> That's right. Because I literally said to James, like, we're playing this game again. And he's like, no, it's a different game. <laughs> oh, shit. So yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, I haven't heard of it. I'm really stoked. I mean, this is my favorite genre. So we're going to, like... Well, it's not an RPG. It's a puzzle action. Ooh, okay, okay. So, I spoke too soon. <laughs> yep, I spoke too soon. Um, yeah, it just kind of... The environment is kind of like you're underground and you're moving around. Anyway. Um, and, we're, and it's by Andrew Davy and Thomas Jens. Uh, and Thomas is in the chat. I don't know if Andrew's going to make it. He lives in Australia, Audio to New Zealand. For me a bit. Oh, God damn. Thanks for letting us know, Ground Trooper. I hate that. Sometimes it's just it just happens, and it's just yeah. the tweaking from our end. It's great that you let us know, though, yep. because we like to be able to, like, Boom, back in sync. Bam. Yeah. Um, that's really, really annoying. And thank you for letting us know. Um, yeah, Andrew Davies in Australia or New Zealand. I think it's New Zealand. Yeah. So it's like three in the morning there. Um, but he was up an hour ago updating the game. So that might maybe, be why he's, maybe he's asleep now. Cause he was updating yeah, the he's game. He's doing a marathon. Yeah. Um, he wanted to get a, um, a really nice solid copy of Sokoban. The second game we'll be playing ready for us. Um, so we'll be playing today's version of it. <laughs> so right up to date that's the cool part about this show we get yeah, like we get the, hot off the press like literally <laughs> right right there um and i want to thank uh, all the people um who subscribe yes and all the people who are in the uh chat today it's a little quiet today yeah it's like a, but that's okay the, the people it's... dying of heat and they're like you know, trying to trying to stay cool and keeping their keeping their computers off, maybe it's very it possible. Very hot around the world. We, we're midsummer, and I mean yeah. midsummer is a certain vibe. My it's joke tough. is, no one's doing anything right now. They're off on vacations, or even if they're working, are they really working? No. Or are they just kind of watching YouTube videos and getting maybe <laughs> an hour right. work done? You know. So in the chat, we've got Ground Trooper uh, Le McAllister. Hey, McAllister. <laughs> and uh, Thrust Twenty Six, Thomas Yench. And uh, who is the co-author of Boulder Dash? Amazing. Uh, so that's always wonderful to have uh, somebody in here to help us out, answer questions from the uh, from the chat, and welcome everybody else who is watching on YouTube later or just watching and not talking. And I want to thank uh, the Twitch subscribers. And I let me get a list. Been really busy oh, lately, yeah. so I've been a little uh, scrambly. <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully this is up to date. I don't think it's changed too much, but I want to thank Gredems, Ground Trooper, Johnny WC, 23, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, RC70, Repentless BG, Retro Happy Hour, Scum Software, Sir Catlegs, uh, Spiceware, S. Ramirez 2008, and Tiki Dan K. And you can subscribe and support us for free if you have an Amazon Prime. Absolutely. And link it to Twitch Prime, and your name will be added to this list. It won't say your name. And uh, just click subscribe, and it'll work. Or you can actually use money, and that'll work too. Yeah, man. But you don't have to do anything. Um, you can just watch the show and enjoy it. Um, uh, and some mail news and feedback. Um, Champ Games uh, posted recently about a an old game Ooh. that I don't think anybody knew that they were working oh, on. God. Champ Games, man. <laughs> Those guys. Relentless. Um, they had worked on it a long time ago. And it was a game that was on the Atari Flashback 2 game system in 2006. Uh, they didn't work on that one. It's one of those um, systems where you just plug it into your TV. It comes with joysticks and a bunch of games built in. You know, one of those systems. Yeah. And it's a bunch of Atari games. Um, and the game Lunar Lander was on that system and we played Re uh, lem 
Were you there for that one? Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> you're landing things, and you have to land it not too hard. And... I was shocked by how fun that game was, actually. Yeah, I it's was such a simplistic concept, but... Very skeptical. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, but Me when too. I when I got to do it, it was really... I liked that it was Plus, a graceful, zen-like it was. feeling. And yeah. then also very competitive in terms of, like, if you could gracefully do it quickly and efficiently, yeah. crazy good points. It was a fun one. So this uh, one that was included in the Atari flashback was closer to the arcade version of Lunar Lander, which we played a little bit of in yeah. the show. The one with the really great audio for the... Um, so what Champ Games was doing was doing a, a fix on that game because there was some stuff missing. It was very flickery, um, the one that was included on it. Yeah. Um, so they were doing an update of that version of the game. Um, but uh, let's see. Did you know that the very first 2600 game program by Champ Games was completed but never released? Ooh. The game is a port of the 1979 uh, Atari's coin-op game Lunar Lander, and was originally supposed to be included on an update of the Atari flashback system in 2006, but the plans were ultimately cancelled. With 2019 being the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings, which we discussed in the other show, and, and the 40th anniversary of Lunar Lander, we thought it would be appropriate to share this bit of Champ Games history with you. And I said, oh, that's great. Uh, um, yeah, please. And he also posted, oh, maybe... Maybe I'll change the title of the game because that's a, a copyright name, so you can't use Lunar Lander. Maybe change the graphics a bit. And he was going to make it uh, an updated version so it's not flickery. And I said, <laughs> oh, hopefully we can play it on the show. And he said, thanks, James. Since this was our first game, there's a lot of things I would like to add before releasing the ROM. And hopefully have a proper release, namely adding a two-player version. I'm guessing alternating, but you could still do two players trying to land at the same time. Uh, proper title screen, more game options, splash screen, high score saving, etc. Basically give it the same treatment as Avalanche. Um, and I said, that's awesome. That sounds great. I'd love to put it on the show. And he said, uh, we'll do, James, and then we can debut it on your show. Always wonderful, dude. Debut John Shampoo, uh, oh my god, uh, uh, allowing us to debut his. his He's been really good games. to the show, man. Yeah, he has. I'm not testing uh, one, two, hey, three. Hey, militant Buddhist. Welcome, militant Buddhist. Oh, what is happening here? Oh, we yeah, we lost our screen is it real all quick. Plugged in? No, we're plugged in. I think it's just maybe the that plug has been giving troubles oh, lately. No. If you could pass over that laptop to me, so I don't have to be absolutely. And I'll be getting this back up again. Cool. Yeah, that's a problem. Let's get this over. Um, so, um, I'm fully in the planning stages of the 2019 Atari Homebrew Awards. Like that's the right. initial. Because um, James does everything last minute. He just yeah. he just wings it, you know. It's Seven like, months ahead. Is... It's, it's like... <laughs> oh, yeah, this is not... Uh... Charging? It is at times. Oh, no. This needs to be replaced. Uh oh, yeah, because it's uh, the th the issue too is it's it's lighting up, but it's not charging. At points, it is okay. We're gonna have to put it down, and then make sure it's charging because as soon as it's not charging, it starts turning off. Okay, that little plug is there. Okay, good. good. Um, can you tell James I'm muted in chat? No, you're not. No, you're not, man. I can see you on the screen. You're going up on the I video think you're good. feed. Um, everything looks good. So, I don't know. We can see it. We can see people, it. People ever... Chat is weird. Only one in three is getting through. Oh, weird. Maybe reconnect? Oh, it's working now. It was muted for a while. Oh. Some got lost. Oh, look at all the people hey, talking Hey, we were like literally staring at this thing being like, is this... Is this working? People this are not talking. Do. Oh, we got all our friends back. Yeah, Thank God. Well, now we can read the names. I felt like I had no friends. I was yeah. like, where are our people? RC70, Dan AVC, Impaler26, Militant Buddhist, Buddhist Thrust. Thrust. Okay, we got a party now. Uh, we yeah, can do Lynn this. <laughs> Andrew Davey is here. Welcome, Andrew. Andrew Davey. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. I don't know what was going on. Did somebody swear in the chat and it shut the whole thing down? That was very, very strange. Let's see. What's... Uh, Dude, he's obsessed with something on the ground. Yeah, that's very weird. See, you weren't performing to an empty room. Everybody was just trying to talk and... I said poop head once. Oh, Militant wrecked it for everyone. Whew. 
Impaler 26. I mean, if they're censoring Poop Head, I mean, they, like... <laughs> it's gone too far. They seri- I'm seriously screwed. Yeah. Poop Head is an issue. <laughs> okay, um, so we're starting up the planning for the 2019 Atari Homebrew Awards, and I was planning to add... Because we just did 2,600 games last year, and I want to add 5,200, 7,800 in the uh, 8-bit computer line of Atari... And I reached out to somebody who um, had a good knowledge of the 8-bit computer games that are released. And there's quite a few, actually. He, had, he pointed me to a page that had a big list of all the 2019 uh, Atari 8-bit uh, computer games. So I was like, oh, this is great. Um, and the, he also let me know that in previous years, they had kind of a best of the year. But they haven't been doing it in the past three years. Not from New Zealand. It's Aussie. It's 4 a.m. Okay. Okay. Corrected. I love it. It's as important detail. It I'm is. I'm so sorry. That's like someone saying we're from America. It's like we're yeah. not. It's like, oh, no, we're not from the USA. That? We're from uh. Canada, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we get it. I was sorry to, to, to make Hobart, that mistake. Tasmania. But... Wow. Oh. Um, but he said uh, this group are, did their own thing, but they haven't done it in a while. So it might be good to reach out to them. Yeah. So now that all I'm missing is the 5,200 and 7,800 people. Um, so if anybody out there knows of the right person to contact that kind of has the finger on the pulse of 5,200 games and 7,800 games, I know there's a lot of crossover between the 5,200 yeah. system and the 8-bit system because... It's the same architecture underneath, so I think a little, there aren't very many 5200 games made. They're just made for the computer system because it's easier that way. Um, yeah, reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, contact me, whichever form you want. Probably the Atari Age forums um, because that's where everything resides. Um, but, yeah, um, we want to uh, get these people that already have knowledge of these systems and what's going on because on the show, we generally just pay attention to 2600 right. releases and we don't know what's going on in the 5200 7800 or the 8 bit um realm so that's the update for that they're like our distant cousins that's right but we're, we want to we're related them. but like you want to yeah. invite them to the wedding it's just that's right we got to figure out their address figure out where they're at if anyone's <laughs> racist right. send them an rsvp there's some yeah. weird things going on you know if they're gonna get too drunk and start jumping on the tables and you gotta yep. be careful with those uh, 5,200, 7,800 <laughs> people. You just don't know what they're gonna do. That's right. Um, <clears throat> so, I'll, I'll refresh everyone and you about um, my um, quest yes. for Boulder Dash, let's say. Um, so, before even the show started, Ooh. Um, say like two years ago or so, um, this was one of my things that I wanted to have on the show, like early in the early in the uh, show's uh, development. Because you guess, do everything or? last minute. You know, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. There's it's no crazy. planning that is. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the inception date of the Facebook page for this show, it's like 2016. That's amazing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's way back. Um, but this was one of them I knew that I wanted to have on the show is Boulder Dash. But it went on sale in 2012, and it was a limited release of 250 copies, and they sold out within the year, and so I was like, well, I can't buy it. And then in the forums, I saw that somebody was nice enough to ship around their copy of Boulder Dash all over the world in exchange for them. If you had it, you had to play it and give a review. Any, any kind of review you want, you can type it out, but you had to give a review of it in exchange for having have, have this yeah. game. And then you also had to agree to pay for the shipping to go to the next person because it got shipped to you. Uh, and then, um, and I was like, oh, that's great. Um, but that finished well before I started or was had an opportunity to start the show, which was in uh, early 2018 now. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I missed it, and that kind of sucks, and maybe I'll have to reach out to somebody. Um, but then it, it just got pushed to the side, and I and I, I forgot about it for a while. Um, 
but then I can't remember why or how this came up. Oh, I know why. Because we played QB. Yeah. Um, QB? QB? I can't, or he's, not he's QB. Gonna, he's going to kill me for my mis- <laughs> QBE? QB? Oh, I can't remember. But uh, we played Andrew Davies' game, and then we... And this is... Uh, his uh, his other twenty six hundred games, so it kind of got on on I that. Am I supposed to? Oh, Andrew mailed around his copy of uh, Boulder yeah. Dash. Oh, that was that was awesome uh, that you that you did that. Um, so it came on. We started talking about Boulder Dash um, because it's one of his one of his games that he made, and then he was able, along with the cooperation of Thomas Yench and Al Yuruso, was able to get me. A copy of Boulder Dash for the show, so we With can play it on the show as well. You know, With some diamonds. How do you know there's diamonds in this? Because we unboxed it. Oh, we unboxed, we unboxed it, it last That's week, right. but just right at the very end. And That's and right. I suppose it was like, yo, there's diamonds in there. We're like, <laughs> I suppose to. And then we open up. Oh, oh, there's uh, there's That's some. That's right. There's actually diamonds. Because I was gonna unbox it on the show. I was gonna play it, but then yeah. I thought That's not a good idea because I wanted to put in some time. Yeah, to test it, it to, and to make, make sure. sure it's all working and everything. So we unboxed at the end of that show where we got it. So, um, so you can check out that unboxing. I'd rather not open it too many times. Totally, that just causes more trouble um, because these boxes are not, you know, and real diamonds. Actually, that's why they. <laughs> that's, that's why, why it's, it's so, so sought after, right? And one diamond for each of the major contributors to the game. So yeah, I think there was. Six, eight? How many were there? Six? And, and they were ripped off of the belt of a welterweight champion, actually. They were, <laughs> That's you know, right. They were, they were very, there's very a mythology about all, buddy. Oh, 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 I, I, oh, bought a, I brought a sandwich in because we had like a meeting before this. Yeah. And um, it has some meat in it. And mm. uh, James is vegan, so it's very unusual to have any meat products in the house. So That's the issue right. is, is the cats smell meat. And they're like, <laughs> right. they want to kill. Yeah, they're like, oh. well, they get fed me. I think that's what so. Pixel was actually smelling, you know what I mean? He was like, oh, going around. He, that's what I'm he sure was... that he, and then Atari just sees it. He's just like, his he nose was right into it. For it. So I wrapped it up, and it's, it's. So, Boulder Dash, here's the cartridge for it. Uh, we're going to be playing that today. This cool. is a game by Andrew Davy and Thomas Yentz, who are both in the chat, which is so awesome. Um, this was released in 2012. We're going to get into minute details of the history of this I game. I love it. Um, because there is a lot should to we do, this game. Should we do that while we play or should we do yeah. that? Yeah, because uh, I'm just going to give a very cool. quick overview of Boulder Dash. We're going to take yeah. a look at the first uh, version of Boulder Dash that was put out for, I believe, the Atari 8-bit. Really? There we wow. go. Um, and then we're going to get into the game, and then there's a lot to talk about while we play. Perfect. And we can hand off back and forth, because it's levels. Each level is a different thing, and it uh, ramps up. So, uh, Andrew Davies' other games is the uh, Atari Age Holiday Cart 2003-2004, Atari Age uh, Christmas Greeting Cart, Boulder Dash, uh, QB, Sokoban, uh, plus, a, plus a ton of C64, NES, and SNES games. Um, there is a two-level demo of this game that you can download on the Atari Age forums, and 250 copies of this game were released in 2012, and that was it. It was released for $75, and now they go for $250 around U.S. Um, uh, if they get listed, but it's so rare yeah. that they would get listed because... Why would you want to give up your copy? Yeah, in the homebrew realm, when there's limited copies, it's not like um, like a PS4 game or any kind of other rare games. These games get end up in the hands of people who play them and, and are enjoy collectors. them and are collectors and just love homebrew. It's not a general game. It's a very specific niche. And um, it's funny because like a limited release for most people is like thousands, yeah, and thousands. probably a limited release 3, for this thousand. is like. Yeah, in the hundreds, low yeah. hundreds. Yeah, so um, it's very, a, I would. It's quite rare. It's not. It's not the rarest homebrew, which is, ooh, you know, that's a good question. Prob- what is the... like in terms of rarest sought after? Yes, homebrew is probably Princess Rescue. Would be the one oh, because, because it got the... pulled fairly shortly yeah. after it was on the market because of Nintendo. What's anyone in chat? What's your like? 
prized possession? Like, what's Either your you home? have or what you want. Yeah, actually, do us do both if you yeah. can. Tell us what you would, the one that you don't have that you wish you had and something you have that's, like... like super rare. Like, you know, homebrew only. Homebrew only. Homebrew only, but, like, yeah, you Or you could extend it out to any video mm-hmm. game as well, but we want to know what your homebrew is first that, that you yeah, want and that you have. That, that are, like... Because everyone's got one, you know? Yeah. Some, some oh, object yeah. that's, like... Yeah. Uh, there were uh, limited homebrew releases were only 20, 30 copies in the past. Yeah. Yes, but they're not Boulder Dash, and no. they're not Princess Rescue. They don't have a high profile. But, yeah, there's but you're there's right. limited homebrew releases with one cart. Totally. But, you know, so it's a give and take of popularity versus the amount. Because if it was super popular, they'd probably make 200 of yeah. them. Because they want to make money, too. and Or they don't have the capabilities. It's it's all over, it's all over the place. So a little bit of history of Boulder Dash before we get into it. Cool. Uh, Boulder Dash is a video game released in 1984 by First Star Software for the so Atari. My chats are lost again. Is there anything we can do from our end? I don't. I'm gonna see if there's so. any limiting uh, factors going on. I'm gonna take them all off if there is. Uh, followers only. Show moderator chats. Show messages. Deleted messages. Brief pause chat. Uh. uh. Chat filters off. High defensive language, that's off right now. What about these other ones? Is everybody like talking garbage? High defense. So that, no, that activates all those. Everything, the filters are off for chat settings. Good. Uh, followers only. Nope, no. everybody can chat. Slow mode is off. It's probably a Twitch thing, man. Yeah, I bet it's a Twitch thing. We haven't changed anything no. from last one. Sorry, ones. friends. It yeah. sucks. Um, yeah, I'm really. You only said about... vegan cats. No, no James's no, cats no. aren't vegan. He's vegan. No, we don't want to give that. That's that's that is a very big contention within the vegan community and a hilarious one. Oh my goodness! Now I've gone away from the chat. Oh no! Because okay. I've been clicking things. Okay, auto ah, vegan dirty word in the neck of in, in the in neck of this woods. Yeah, just ignore it. My my diet has no impact on anybody That's out there, right. so I don't really care. You and me, militant Buddhists. So this we're... says there is some filtering on race, religion, gender. So, but I'm sure not every single person in the chat is talking. Go forth and eat. It is all good. Talking. That's how I feel too, militant Buddhist. Yeah, so. that's the cool thing about being in America, being in Canada. You know, as long as you're not hurting anyone, you can totally do what you want. Oh, now we've lost the chat, and it's playing videos. Yeah, we've got some artificial season two. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> we're, we're, oh, we're my currently God. streaming somebody else. Yeah. Okay, let's get this chat back. Uh, you can shape kale into the shape of a pork chop. Compromise. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, okay Ground back. Trooper has something to say. Uh, he said, okay. Boulder Dash was my number one homebrew bucket list game. Right. I got one last year. My number two was Thrust Plus with, with foot, foot pedal. Pedals. And I got that one this year. I guess I need bucket list games. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's already fulfilled his bucket list. Dream is real. <laughs> Sorry about the chat, man. It's, it's, yeah. we, we checked it from our end, though. It seems There's, to be... Nothing has been changed. We haven't touched anything. Uh, it's maybe a Twitch bug that's messing up with all the all the chats everywhere um but some some things are getting through um others aren't others aren't so bear with us and hopefully if if it doesn't show up type it again that's that's all yeah, i can sorry, say for friends. now um there have been numerous yeah. versions and sequels uh for the series including new uh numerous interactive platforms including apple 2 msx zx spectrum commodore 64 ColecoVision, nes bbc micro acorn electric ibm pc amstrad cpc amiga mac os and other platforms and sadly i don't think it mentions the atari 2600 uh version anywhere in really? the wikipedia entry so somebody needs to correct that I'm just going to scan it again really quickly, but uh, it's uh, it, that is not right, actually. That should be in there because it's such an accomplishment. No, zero. Zero. A reference to the 2600 version. So somebody needs to go in there and fix that up because that's yeah. that's huge. Dino, I just said I added a save search on eBay for Boulder Dash 2600 a year ago till now. No results. Yeah, yeah, it's very rare that, like I was saying, people would give it up. And want to, uh, want to, yeah. Uh, like, uh, the only time I would think is somebody is done with homebrew and they're selling off their whole collection. Yeah. 
I really wanted Juno first and Atari Vox. That's not hard to get, just a little costly. Yeah, Juno first and Atari Vox, good combo. Very, very cool. Um, and as of January 1st, 2018, First Star Software name and website are owned by BBG Entertainment GmbH, which also uh, purchased intellectual property, property rights pertaining to some games, including Boulder Dash. So it has changed hands since this game was put out. Um, so First Star Software is no more. Well, actually, it is still existing, but it's under a different name. Um, so let's take a look at um, the first version that was ever put out of Boulder Dash, which was for the Atari 8-bit computer. Um, so let me load that up, and there's a nice low in the chat while I do that. Yeah, Grand um, Trooper said he got his seller in the Atari Age forums. Oh, yeah, so not even just um, eBay. It, there's There's places that you can find these like Facebook um, sellers there's the Atari age forum as well so let's bring this why you keep why does it keep playing stop it automatically okay Ooh. there we go Boulder Dash for the Atari 8-bit family uh, and I'll unmute that <laughs> a bit yeah level select you go into it and you're the little dude comes out of the flashing box and your goal is to get diamonds and collect as many diamonds as you can um sometimes there are levels where there are more diamonds than you need so the boulders fall on you is this yes, the idea there is so gravity and you don't want uh, them to fall so like that one there is suicide uh, no, it's nope. just quick. You just have to move fast. Yeah, so you kind of hold them up as you go underneath them. Ah, oh, so... So they won't fall on you if you are directly beneath them. But what? as soon as you move away from them, you get a better be out of the way, right? There we go, I see. So you don't want to die. Yeah, so there's different ways of falling. Um, they can fall to the side, too. Wow. If there is a room, an opportunity for them to fall, like that one's going to fall to the side. Um, and there is a delay as well. Like, there's things happen in the background. So you can see, like, if you looked at this game, you went, oh, port it to the 2600. It's like, uh, hmm, this is a very complex game. There's a lot of shit going on, man. Yeah, and it's not real time. There's things happening in the background. There's and those a mechanics lot of calculations. Those mechanics feel like they work, man. And there's What's things that, that are thing? trapped. That little square. That that's, you don't want to necessarily let out. You up. Yeah, it's going to mess you um, so there, there you go. Now you can get a good feeling for what the original version looked like. Oh, I played cool. it on the Commodore 64. Um, not yeah. much. I should have played it more because it's it's a really amazing puzzle game. Puzzle action. Because there is a timer, so you don't have infinite it's not, time. Yeah, it's not just... So you do have to keep moving, but it's also a puzzle. Like, how is how am I going to get to that diamond? You can yeah. push. Oh, right? cool. And sometimes you have to make the boulders fall to get to um like this one it's like okay i have to fall but if i push if that guy pushes that one in it's he's dead because you can't push two you can only push one so there you go oh he's got all the diamonds he's done he can head for the he exit that's a bonus diamond i think okay so we get that I'm just into this watching just boulder dash man that's yeah crazy. so it's, okay, hopefully cool. it's, We're about hopefully to do it's this. visually interesting for people watching and i think it will be I wonder why somebody would remove the 2600 version from Wikipedia. Bizarre. Comment was about licensing. That is weird. Weird. It was fully licensed um, by First Star Software. <laughs> Call this rock release. run and avoid it. People delete stuff from Wikipedia. It's like Galagon, you know. I'm just <laughs> yeah. If rock run. Hey, rock run is. Rock it is actually licensed. Look, it has the First Star Software in there. It was totally licensed. Weird. So they maybe thought it wasn't licensed, and that's why they deleted it. So people on Wikipedia are, are crazy. Are crazy, crazy. Did you ever? There's a video of a guy who like is like the world record holder for like changing wikipedia articles i think oh yeah was... i've seen him on the news yeah and i'm yeah. like i'm like that's he's exactly what you would imagine a guy who yeah. just is doing wikipedia you all need a lot of time yeah and it's like his mission man he's like he's he's made it his goal but he yeah yeah okay so we're gonna go into the game 
I'll show it from boot up so you can see it. <laughs> J92R, hey. Welcome, uh, J92R. It's going well, man. Are you a creature from the uh, Star Wars universe? That feels, he feels like he could be one. Oh, that is it's sort of a name. Oh, that's very loud. There we go. And we can't see it or hear it, but I will fix it. Oh, that. see, uh, RC7E noticed your changes in your, uh, uh, our background. He said, what's the little time tag? I had the same question for James. Where? Right here. Oh, yeah. yes. The same I think question. I talked a little bit that, about that on a, on an earlier show. Um... Yeah, he said it's just his uh, 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 initials and birth. Oh, here. okay. You well, could have just given yeah. away stuff. Oh, yeah, see, there you go. Okay, so this is uh, from an ar arcade that opened up nearby, and they give you these little stickers, and these mean when you are, you need to get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, they're like... Because that's what you paid up to. So you wear this in the arcade, and it's like, oh, I paid till 8, or I paid till 10.30, and I've been twice, so I just put them up there. Amazing arcade, and I have uh, local records Ooh. for Satan's Hollow. Yay! And, of course you do, though, yeah. man. And what's the other one I have a record for? So much um, more practice to these things remember than... the other one. But, I yeah, Satan's Hollow is so much fun. Okay, so here we are. Boulder Dash. It's on demo mode right now. This title screen looks exactly... Is that right? Oh, exactly cool. the same as the Atari 8-bit. As usual, I know nothing. And it's got really great music as well. Yeah, that's not bad at all. It sounds exactly like the music from Boulder Dash. Okay, so I'm going to give it to you first while I do a lot of reading. Ooh, okay, let's see how I do with this. Should I just hit it? Yep, jump hit in? it, and then you get to pick cave a. which cave, I think I'm just going to do level, standard. Players, joystick, yeah. Just all the standard. Where's my guy? Okay, so that's your dude. Let's actually read the instructions first so that we know what we're playing. It's the game of objective. Uh, the objective of Boulder Dash is to guide Rockford through the many challenges. And Rockford. Rockford, yeah. Um, and uh, get as many diamonds in the oh! short, shortest time okay, possible. That's, that's not what we want to do. Okay. Uh, once the required number of diamonds have been collected, the door to the mysterious escape tunnel is revealed. So you don't know where the door is yet until you get the diamonds. Okay, so what's interesting is it's the same thing, which is cool. There you go. Uh-oh. There you go. Yeah, play it safe. Uh, play it safe. Strategy and planning will help you master the physics of Boulder Dash. Boulders drop predictably enough, but you also have the block of growing amoebas, uh -oh. transform butterflies, uh -oh. outmaneuver fireflies, and overcome wow. numerous other obstacles. Game controls, pretty obvious. Um, to push, grab, or dig without moving Rockford, hold the joystick button down while moving the joystick in the de desired direction. So you can dig beside you. Whoa! No, See, why you, did I die? Uh, a boulder fell. From the other? Okay, yeah. I'm still wrapping my brain around this. Yeah. I thought I was doing so well. Okay, this is a little bit trickier than I thought. Yeah, yeah. I was getting all cocky. I'm like, ooh, this is easy. I've got <laughs> no, no... To look around the cave without moving Rockford, hold the joystick button down. Oh, so you can look around. Uh oh, see, no, I'm fucked. No. Uh, and I was done before. You I... dug under that. You should have not dug and went below nah. that. Okay. Currently, right now, I have the music made for the homebrew game Scepter and Unified. Both of them are still in the progress of being made. Oh, you're a developer. Excellent. Hey, dude, that's great. Um, uh, music developer. That's excellent. Ah, good old Atari stuff. I remember making music for Atari Homebrew games before. Quite fun. Oh, I, think I remember. That's excellent. I, think um, I remember that there's really nothing there. Yeah. So you can get trapped and you can reset the game, um, but you do lose a life. Um, press select and reset simultaneously to end the current game. Return to the selection screen. You start with three lives, bonus life every 500 points. So they're pretty see watch out ah oh, see it's the same issue i did the same thing because you cleared it and a boulder sitting on another boulder we'll fall okay. is teeters it can't it can't okay yeah you'll get that i won't need to learn from my mistakes you can't escape falling rocks so you can move away from oh it. cool okay i'll just have to be a little bit faster with see that one yeah how that one Mo fell over yeah Okay, uh, a bonus life is earned by completing a playable intermission. 
Whoa, cool. Um, selection screen. Yeah, we did that. Selecting caves. There are 16 caves. Uh-oh. A through P. Uh, comprised of a large playing area. Only A, Good E, choices. I, or M can be selected that's starving, starting caves. So you have to earn your way to some of these caves. Um, uh, C. Select. Learning from my there mistakes. There you go. There oh. you go. You got it. Each in, cave... In, in two years, we might make it to level two. <laughs> oh, I think you're... Probably pretty good if you take it a little... Oh, watch out. Don't go down. See? Oh, thank God. Okay. And you're safe going under it because you're holding it up. And it only goes can go down. Uh, each cave uh -oh. has five level difficulties. Uh, to select a different difficulty level, move to joystick left or right. Da, da, da. One or two player games. Two player games alternate between players' loss of life. Yep. Does this mean I get to go? Uh, yep. Is this the last diamond? No, one more, one more diamond to get. Okay, somewhere. Okay, okay, we're gonna we're gonna play this safe. And you can first. look around. There you go. And that. Oh, what? We're very close. Maybe you don't. Okay, I don't know the screen. We're getting close yet. to. It says two, three. Oh, these are bonus diamonds. Oh these are just shit! Bonus diamonds, okay. So it's all good. That's great news, friends. Yeah. That's the best news we heard all day. So I think I missed something. Did it flash? Did the screen flash? Um, it did. At that a means you point. probably got all Ugh, the diamonds. So now. what do I do here? Just go under. Yep, you're fine. Go. Yep, and I don't think it'll fall to the side because okay, on, on dirt it's fine. Yeah, always go above them, and there's your exit. Hey! Fuck yeah! It. Okay, level two. I think I'm sort of figuring this out. Yeah, you understanding the physics, and I think each new level is going to present new challenges. New challenges you have. This looks very before. similar to the um, like. It looks like it's a good combo of like what the other one was, because like looking at this. Yeah, so you're already avoiding digging out dirt yeah, and I'm dropping the rocks. Like... Try holding fire while moving the joystick in the direction to dig the dirt beside you. There you go. So if you don't want to endanger yourself. Dude. By going under a Was boulder. that Andrew Davey? Uh, that Who was said that? Deanoid. Deanoid. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Oh my god, man. Saving my butt. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, joystick selection. Options. Caves. Um, a, intro. Pick up the diamonds. B. Is it, you're on B now? I think so. Cave B? No, I think it's just intro, because it has five difficulty levels for okay, each cave. Okay. So this is just pick up diamonds and exit before the time is up. Okay. The so other this, one These is... are not hard. There's no tricks I or anything. I'm feeling like I'm missing, like, uh, like I'm you can, forgetting something. You can look I'm, around I'm by holding the button down and looking around. Oh. Are you holding it down? Yeah, but it sort of just digs it, right? That's okay. I think... Oh, you should be able to look around the whole level. Uh-oh. Hold it down. Nah, I can't, like... Hold down the button longer. There. Now look around. There you go. Oh, sick. Now you can find where the diamonds are. So there, you have to clear that one. Okay, good. Friends. So it describes all the different caves, and we'll get to those um, when we make it there. Uh, but there is A through P, and five each. So there's tons of levels. Just yeah, tons. Yeah, should have been more methodical, actually. If I did this again, I would do it much better. I know. Uh, how to, the I know points how for collecting the diamonds and for remaining time when you complete a lay, uh, cave. The number of points per diamond changes. The point value is determined by the cave, difficulty, and bonus status. Um, so let's see the readout, what all of this means. So diamonds required... You still have three more diamonds to get. Cool. And that is the time left. Um, extra diamonds is when it kind of fills in. Oh, you gotta... Oh, this was on the demo. This was on... Uh, or was it on the Atari 8-bit, I think. There you go. Fall them away. And then you gotta get that one. There you go. Now you can push that one away. There. Dude. Awesome. I only got Dino says left, this port is though. amazing. Yep, it's a great port. It is. Okay, I got it. There you go. But like I don't know where. Now you go to go get the door, find the exit. Figure out where the exit is. Now where you could scan it? around rather than waste time. That's a good. Because you only have 18 seconds, so hold it down and look really quick. Oh, shit. Hold it down. There you go. That's probably far away. Yeah, go down. There you go. 11 seconds. Oh no. I'm done. There it is. Nope. 
right oh, there. You haven't got all the diamonds. Oh, no. no. But it should be showing. But I'm done. Yeah. Oh, uh, is, that is that it? it? That looks like it. Yeah. So straight down. You could do it. Three, two, go down. Oh, shit. Oh, no. That's nothing. That's what just is that? The, that's just a wall. That's just the entrance. Okay. Do you have to get all of the diamonds? So, um... Oh, that was an extra life, Andrew Davy said. Flash. That's skinny. Why, do you have 500 points already? Oh, you do have 500 points. Oh, that was an extra life. Okay. Ah, thank you. So the game elements. Rockford. This little fellow is the star of the game. Rockford has the power Rockford. to dig through the earth and collect the diamonds found along the way. He can push a single boulder horizontally. Uh, if there's nothing to block his path, Rockford can stand directly under a boulder without being crushed. But if a boulder or diamonds fall on him... Oh, diamonds can kill you too. You will lose one life. If you lose all your lives, the game ends and you'll have to start over. So there's boulders, which we've seen. We know what boulders are. Diamonds, yep. Fireflies are the squares. Uh, they will explode on contact with Rockford. Whoa, okay. Helpful hint, their behavior is predictable. They only move along the edges. I think there's one in this level. Yeah, I yeah. think I saw it. It's right there. Yeah, don't want to let it out. Uh, try turning the tables by dropping boulders on them, which causes them to blow up. Oh, that's cool. Butterflies. The colorful butter butterflies behave much like fireflies. However, they fly in the opposite direction, and they turn into diamonds when they explode. So that's how helpful. Amoeba is a green blob that bubbles and grows through the earth and the air. Rockford can touch it without harm. Oh. Fireflies and butterflies will explode in contact with the amoeba. When the amoeba is surrounded and cannot grow any further, it suffocates and turns into diamonds. However, the amoeba grows too large, about 200 square ba squares big, it will die, die and turn into boulders. Mm. Enchanted wall. The enchanted wall looks like any other wall, however, when hit by a falling boulder, it will begin to vibrate for a limited time. During this period, any boulders that drop through it are magically turned into diamonds, but only uh, if there's empty space below the wall. So we will get to all these. Uh, escape door. Initially, the door looks like a portion of the titanium wall. After Rockford has collected the required amount of diamonds, it is activated and begins to flash. So you should I'm trying to see have it what, somewhere. I'm trying to see like where it is. There it is. That does feel like it, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's flashing. That's the one you want to go for. Okay, good. So you got a lot, of much more time left this yeah. time. Oh, fuck. Why'd you do? Well, oh, I was just going to, I was trying to move quickly. Oh. Speaking of bucket lists, there is a princess rescue on eBay right now. Buy it now, $300. That's not too bad for Princess Rescue God, if you really want Princess that's Rescue. That's so annoying, man. Yep. So we're going to get into the history of it. And I think oh, there's a lot here. There's a lot. Luckily, I know where I'm going, so um, that's something. Hmm. This is interesting because I made my own notes from the Atari Age forums. And I f it says here, uh, the journey. It has been a long, hard journey building the completed product you see before you. It started around t December 2002 when Thomas, Andrew, and others were wondering if Boulder Dash was possible in the Atari 2600. I have date stamp of 2004 for that um there was a thread started by lord chaos titled game idea boulder dash 2600 and this may not be a bit the earliest one but it seems like the one it says uh i i wonder if it's possible to write a boulder dash clone for the atari 2600 somewhat similar to games that do exist mr do dig dug for example um Oh, what the hell? Don't I have the link? One second. We got it all. The dream has come true. <laughs> I just need to not die. Just don't like dig I, anymore. There should be a clear path like for I you. Like I did last time. Okay, I'll do it this way. Yay! Okay. Friends, level three inbound. I got not that much life. <laughs> but How many lives do you have left? 
But we got heart. That counts for something, That's right? That's right. <laughs> and death. Insta death. Oh, there we God. go. I'll copy this to my okay. notes. Mistakes have been made. We are aware. <laughs> uh, mechanics are. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> See, that's the one that, that like, messes me up. Oh, there's a lot going on now. Well, just see, I'm trying to, like, wrap my brain Oh, around. there's lots of walls, too, eh? This one's quite tricky, Thrust says. Yeah, it feels like it, friends. Yeah, you're fine going down there. Right? Oh, you're not. See? It falls off walls. Because those are, that, those are the oh, things you that... you trapped it now. Yeah, those Unless are... you can get it from the other side. Oh, for sure can, I believe. Although, we'll see, man. Like, those are the things that mess with my head because I have to remember that, like, see, this is going to fall. It is, yeah. Unless but you've I, got a path through. Unless I do that. Uh, okay, so let's read this um, thread that I found. Um, and he goes into technical issues that are pop... Shit problems the main problem would be lack of ram original boulder dash levels are 40 by 22 uh -oh. or 20 by 11 intermissions it would take too much ram um, but you can put extra ram on cartridges which they did and then thomas yance replied to it you already identified some of the major problems correctly yourself this is september 29 2004 now add the very restricted 2600 hardware and not least potential major copyright problems what do you get a challenge um, I have a feeling you're never going to get past the screen. Yeah, Andrew, unfortunately. Do you want to switch over? Um, yes. I just want to finish this part. Sure. Um, can you start in on that and start right on that level? I think you can, right? Click it and go to... Level three? Was it three? Yeah. Okay. Wow, well, that was a very cool no. sound for Atari. I think it's a different uh, thing, because this is the beginning. It's just... Oh. I think level three was not level three. It was like maybe cave C. That's probably. Okay, press it. Maybe cave. No, that jumps caves. Maybe it was cave C? Let's see what the description of cave C is. A oh, not cave E. Oh, okay. Well, you didn't make it cave no. E, did you? Oh, I did. E? Oh, there you go. There you oh, go. A, go to e. e. Or it might be I, actually. No, you didn't. Well, I made it through. Th I made it through the first one. The second one was on the third one. Okay, well that's C. So, but, but but it can't get me. Well, then you have to start from here, okay. <laughs> which sucks. Uh, <laughs> that's all good. Um, and then I go down the list, and then Andrew Davy comes in on October 15, two thousand four. I posted a binary of a single screen demonstrating how Boulder Dash could look on the twenty six hundred. Thomas has already. Oh. Uh, Godzilla said, if I remember correctly, Davey posted a pic using his graphics engine for 26 and regarding a boulder dash a while ago. Okay, so, oh, see, so this was not the initial thread. Um, he said, I posted a binary of a single screen demonstrating how, how a boulder dash could look on a 2600. Thomas has also posted a binary with another variant of the display. Um, and he said, containing not even a complete single screen. How did I do this before? And um, Andrew posted a very, very colorful version of uh, Boulder Dash. Wow, that's really, really colorful. Yeah. Oh, Ugh, anyway, so that was not the initial one. Um, so um, if you want to switch over and you can continue reading The Journey. Sure. Because you've played this level. The Journey. There we go. I don't think I got into it at all. Uh, right that here. one, yeah, the beginning. Okay, yep. so the beginning. Um, it all started around December 2002 when Thomas, Andrew, and others were wondering if Boulder Dash was possible on the Atari 2600. They had, around that time, been experimenting with techniques to display colored bitmap images using multicolor six sprite routines. These experiments resulted in the inter interleaved chrono color ICC demos. Uh, the colored images were displayed by having different colors on successive scan lines, red, then green, then blue, then red, etc. Mm. And uh, considering a virtual pixel as a combination of on slash off pixels covering those three lines. The scan line colors and on off pixels were rolled so that any individual um, scan line also cycled through the red, green, blue, red, etc. Um, towards the end of the development of these interesting uh, color displays... Um, um, so Thomas says that uh, he did uh, mainly the graphics for it in the chat there. 
um, uh, towards the end of development of these interesting color displays techniques when Thomas and Andrew were in friendly competition to find the best way to produce colored graphics, they started discussing ways to display graphics for a Boulder Dash game. Mm. Thomas presented a simple mock-up displaying using multicolor interleaved um, uh, sprite graphics in December 2002. Right, so you can see in the game, like right below the character, you can see it's red, green, blue. Red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Uh, for the for the boulder there. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of using different intensities of the colors to create Dis kind of a new graphic and a new color for it. And then down to the left, there's just a red stripe in some parts of it. Wow. So that's like the red part of the boulder. And then there's a little, little pop-up with like a little 8-bit Thomas, and it says... It looked quite nice, but at that time, I was still more into staying within the limits of the mid-80s, and back then, the amount of RAM that Boulder Dash needs was too expensive to add to a cart. Mm, yeah. Because these screens are huge. Huge! My technique is to do the bottom floor, then the top, because you kind of jump. Oh. Just so that it's like I, almost doing like a zigzag, because that's the only way I could keep it straight. Uh... Um, Andrew uh, continued okay. his line of experimentation with full screen play field graphics using the ICC technique. The limited horizontal play field resolution, 40 pixels, would mean that the yeah. objects in the game would need to be drawn using just a few pixels each. These early mock ops were exploring how those objects would look. With 3 pixels per object, 13 objects could be drawn on a line. It was hard to see how recognizable um, objects could be drawn with just 3 pixels with 4 pixels per object. Just 10 objects could be drawn on a line, but objects could just be recognized. Mm. These demos all flickered, relying on rapidly changing pixels and colors to achieve the multicolored graphics. Yeah, there's no flicker at all on this. What a crazy thing, man, that like... You know, to, to achieve these colors in these limitations, they have to work with the, all these very interesting workarounds. Oh, yeah, that's what the 2600 is all about, is working within the limitations of the hardware you're given and, and, and make it look the best it can. Um, the, um, do you want me to read the whole thing? I can keep yeah, going. It, yeah, yeah, we, we got time. Let's do it. The display engine. Mockups are the one thing, but how on earth could this sort of graphic display actually be implemented along with all the processing and game logic required for Boulder Dash? Um, um, it's a seemingly impossible task for a 1.19 um, megahertz processor. Yeah, it's a slow processor. Which has to spend most of its uh, its life feeding graphics to the TV. <laughs> and then we've got another little 8-bit guy, a little pop-up, which says, clearly representing a 40 by 20 character-based scrolling display at 20 hertz is not going to happen on a 1.9 um, uh, millihertz. Uh, si uh, 6507 megahertz. megahertz, sorry. Yeah. 6507 with just 128 bytes of RAM. <laughs> No, um, but there is no coprocessor used in this, which is really, really amazing. And um, the first uh, concession to reality was to, rela uh, was to relax the RAM limitation. The Atari 2600 mm. had, uh, um, has just 128 bytes of RAM, but various bank-switching schemes had previously added extra RAM, so it was not unreasonable for a Boulder Dash cartridge to use extra RAM. Both Thomas and Andrew were fortunate to have the wonderful uh, Crocodile Car, KK, designed by Armin Vogel. This is an Atari 2600 cartridge which emulates other cartridges. In short, you can download any game to it using any bank switching scheme, and the KKK, the KK, <laughs> it's very different than the KKK, the KK <laughs> yeah, is, uh, is yeah. able to emulate the bank switching scheme so that the gameplay can play on the KK. Great stuff. The KK is a fairly capable bit of hardware. Um, wonderful for development and to allow it to emulate all of the various bank switching schemes it has a hefty amount of RAM on board and then um, after implementing uh, the logic for all supported bank switching schemes Armin found himself with a little leftover space and he designed in consultation with Andrew a new bank switching scheme to assist with some of the early multicolor graphics demos that Andrew was working on 
Example, Color Dancing Baby. Color Dancing Baby. <laughs> <laughs> this new scheme was known as the 3E, which is, uh, uh, to, which is the address to which writes are made to the actual RAM bank switching. The scheme is limited um, by available code space Armin had to the KK ROM, very little. And so there were some limitations related to writing data across pages, and the organization of switchable um, banks uh, was very restrictive. But... It provided RAM, lots of it, and so it was attractive. Oh, oh dude, you're you're doing actually fairly well, man. Not bad. This not this bad. is a nightmare here, man. Be very careful in this. On this bottom left. Yes, just because Wait, it's there's, two more. There's Where a, is the other one? There's one there, and there's a big God. The time limit is actually is. tricky, hey. It's Twelve. A, I won't make it. Actually. Yeah, man, it's I'm not really make tough. It. And see what that, just happened? Because it fell. This, this is where I said this is area is really hard because there, there a lot of them are balanced in such a way. This is where it gets uh, very puzzled. Do it all over again. This is a hard level, man. Uh, what did it, who who said? He's like Andrew's. Like yeah, you're not getting past this. <laughs> you're not getting past this. Um, okay, so we got another little bubble which says, in hindsight, it's a rather ugly and difficult. It is rather ugly and difficult to use bank switching scheme, and we definitely uh, wouldn't use it if we were developing the game from scratch. Mm. See, yeah, you gotta be super careful. Let me get this one first. Yeah, it's a good call because that's, yeah. that's the trickier one. Um, uh, Anything? No, chat? sorry, nothing. Uh, <laughs> it's my stupid phone. Let me make sure that it doesn't go off. I, I haven't heard it. No, it's just I can see the text happen. I just oh, it's see distracting. It. Just for me, I'm. Yeah. Oh, another life! Yay. Uh, Lives are pretty pretty plentiful. Thankfully. Yeah, which is fairly helpful. I'm gonna um, kind of go left to right. Careful. Oh no. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get that out of the way, but that's gonna fall. Ooh. Oh, I didn't expect that diamond to fall. I have God. to treat them as boulders. What a route. Yeah, this is. Uh... This is not an easy level. The no, difficulty this is a, this up. is where this this turned into a puzzle game. Yes, this, this level one is is, a puzzle. is now we're in puzzle territory. Yes, not just race against the clock. It's puzzle time. Um, so here's this is interesting. One of the first design decisions was to remove the rolling colors from the display. This meant that the colors on the scan lines were not rolled, and only a single frame was used to draw objects instead of three that's, frames that's with alternating smart. RGB scan lines. Yeah, thank you makes it a lot less terrible to look at. And this saves significant memory and simplified the draw system. The resultant mm. screens were not as high resolution as the original system, but don't suffer from flicker. None whatsoever. No, no, there is no flicker. Uh, Andrew Davies said, which is true, he says, yes, even though I know how it works, it's still impressive to me that it's doing all that stuff. It's amazing the amount of like oh. ingenuity required to sort of like figure out this... You know, it's 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 like a game of Boulder Dash trying to make Boulder Dash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just the tile engine that they have here that they've made is a very rare in uh, an Atari Twenty Six Hundred game to have a play field this big. Yeah, it's massive um, because of you know just the complexity of it and the amount of RAM that's needed, like they're talking about. Whoa. I might go, go up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let them fall and then grab them after. <laughs> Andrew I'm... spent much of the uh, 20, uh, 2004 working on the underlying software. graphics engine. This mm -hmm. engine does mm -hmm. in software what most later consoles did in hardware. Um, provided a character map display. The characters in the engine are the boulders, dirt, diamonds, etc. They are four playable pixels wide, a uh, nibble each. Mm. and 21 scan lines deep. However, due to the triplet nature of the ICC type display, the vertical resolution is ambiguous, 21 scan lines, but only seven RGB pixels. Um, the engine performs a massive amount of byte uh, shifting to draw the 40 by 20 scrollable uh, play field on which the Boulder Dash game is played. I just didn't mean to do that. Are you trapped? I Yes, I think I am. Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, God. What a nightmare. Oh, okay. You time are stuck. For time for suicide. Oh, God. We need the, the Boulder Dash suicide button. You can oh, keep going, man. Tardy box noise. Is it, does it have a Tardy box noises? Yeah, 
keep going. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because you have to make it to E to be able to start so, on E. You right? gotta be good enough to, to cheat. It's so uh, great. Yeah. Oh, God. Nightmare. Um... Early versions of the engine provided the feasibility of a character graphic emulator, but were so slow as to be effectively unusable. It's cool. They actually shows this is. I, oh man, it's cool that it comes with this because it's actually got some really neat images that show like the different, um, uh, like examples of what he's talking about, like the two thousand three version, oh, two thousand four yeah, yeah. version. It's gonna be really hard for me to show that, you, but um, I can. Yeah, you could go up to the camera and put it like right in its face. I don't know. Yeah. See, that's kind of... That's feelable. It's yeah. very cool. And then there's the other one, which is on this side, too, which shows... Oh, see, sorry. It's too dark. Not enough light on it. <laughs> Not enough light. It's just a black yeah, square. it's just too much. Sorry, friends. But that's uh, one of the cool things about getting this uh, this cartridge and also with this pamphlet, because it's got a, like... This is one of the most detailed written things. Yeah, it's probably the most detailed... Um, about the development of the game I've seen in a in a, in a in thing before. Yeah. Um, to draw a character on the screen, you have to move at least 21 bytes to the screen. With 80 characters on the screen, 8 by 10, that means a lot of bank switching and byte masking. And soon you find that to update the entire screen, which you have to do when, for example, the game scrolls, dot, yeah. dot, dot, yeah. you are looking at a multiple seconds per frame. Um, the first multiple seconds per frame. The first uh, uh, solution to the scroll problem was mm. to have a static uh, screen, which then halted the game when you got near the edge, redraw the whole screen, and then let um, play continue. It was ugly, but at that time, the only viable solution. Mm. All along, this game has been riding on the edge of the capabilities of the machine <laughs> and the software. Always oh, pushing it. It's yeah. amazing. Um, uh, one of the uh, real problems. Andrew wants another level. Oh, <laughs> they're sick of watching us fail on, on C. Okay. Yeah, yeah, why not? It's a good idea. It is. Yeah, pop over to E. He said, we'll yeah. just miss D. Yeah, it makes sounds. Whoa. Oh, big open. What is going on? Oh. Holy shit. I only have to get four diamonds. Wait. Okay, I'm going to look around without digging. Wow. Oh. Oh, guards. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'd go underneath, man. That's how I would do it. Dig up. You know? Um, See what I mean? Because, you know, if you can... Oh, it scrolls back to you, too. That's what I would it doesn't do. doesn't even snap back. I guarantee you like, it's going to work. Let it drop? No, no. Go go into the middle one. Oh, you already... You know, and then, like... And then just pop up to the middle, grab it. And then, oh. Yeah, like there, I would just run up. Yeah, oh, but... shit. It kills you, though. <laughs> yes, it But does. you got to do the right timing. Yeah, so it's a little bit so away it's like from it. So a little it. above. I don't think that's true. I what I'm My tactic is to to let it out oh that makes sense and uh, whoa and then grab the diamond after it's gone out that's cause... a way better tactic james that's a way better tactic. of course oh, oh you have to be God. careful though do, 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 do. so you have to uh give them a little bit of space to roam around i think whoa like here here have some yeah give them a, have little, a playground give them, give them a little maze and then when they're release away. the hounds. Whoa. This just became. <gasps> no. Whoa! <laughs> oh, 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 holy shit. Run, forest, dun, 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 dun. forest. Did it, I think. I think so. So a I bunch are clear now. I just have to make sure there's no. Sneak up, sneak up, yep. steal those diamonds. Yep. <laughs> so not, those are our diamonds now. <laughs> oh. Ah! No! Then there's a ton of them out out in the wild. <laughs> Tactics, dude. Man. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, not I. Oh, no. Oh, okay, it. we can check that out. Try Some... get it. At least Man. finish E. Um, uh, nice idea, but... but... Yeah, dude. Yeah, no kidding. One of the real problems for efficient screen draw is the very odd play field format. The bytes are consistent, and the bits in the bytes go every which way. 
It means that when you are drawing a character in one oh. position of the screen, different shape data needs to be used um, uh, than if it is drawn in another position on the screen. This in turn doubles the space you need for character's shape um, definitions, which in turn fills up the bank ROM space, which in turn means you have less space for character definitions, so you have to have less characters or do more bank switching. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's a big... You know, you have to sacrifice one thing for the other thing in the Atari. Oh my god. Holy shit. At least you can run as fast as them. Oh, stop following me. I think... What if you do like a little like little snake pattern, you know? Like That's... give them, send them on a real like... Because those those guys have a pattern that they go around the wall in a certain direction, but they follow the whole wall. So if you understand their... Hey, Did I now I would, yeah, now I would look and see where, I, yeah, it's right there. I can escape. Let's escape. Yeah. It's all about showing off the levels. Totally. Almost a free life. Hint, they are, are wall huggers. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what are we do mm. now on EF? -E so if, if you flip back a couple pages. It's going to show me the, bend the pages. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> EF. There's like a list of the man of the uh, levels, A through A through P, and it gives a good description of them. There, so we're on F. This is the Firefly Dens. Each firefly is guarding a diamond. Oh, Fuck, and we got kind of the same. And we got boulders too to deal yeah. with. So like, you can't just run. Holy shit. So how does so we have to get four of them? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. And they go around in a clockwise manner yeah so if i dig that out and it kills me oh god <laughs> okay a, a major leap forward came with the idea of a differential screen draw the reasoning mm. behind this is that most of the screen doesn't actually change when you scroll lots of dirt and a few boulders and a few other items but much of the screen um is the same even though your brain doesn't really notice this, the engine takes advantage of this and only draws those characters that change. Uh, this reduces the draw requirements from 80 characters per scroll by a factor of 10. The system for the uh, differential mm. draw wasn't exactly simple, and this required extensive rewrites of the display system, but it was well worth it. Now, we've had something uh, uh, which showed promise. Oh, do we lose our... Camera. Oh, no! Okay, we'll very get our image here. back, friends. It is very hot here. Camera is way too hot. I do plan on getting a new camera that uh, will hopefully be able to withstand. Yeah, we just the colors. We we oh. just we just might have like nailed down a new job, which we'll get the new camera today, which is awesome. Yeah. It's just the, hopefully. We'll see though. That's the life of uh, filmmakers. Is like you know, we I, I've been developing this project for like four months. Yeah, with no pay. So it's like yeah, hopefully it's time. It's time. Uh, but it's a different life. I would never. I would never <laughs> complain because it's it's the life we picked. Thank you for letting us know, Ground Trooper. Camera is too camera. sexy for an image. The hosts are too hot. Twitch dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> We're just too hot for this. Yeah, shit. too hot. Camera couldn't handle it. It is hot, and the lights in the room don't don't help. At yeah, all. they definitely don't help. It's also like midsummer. It's crazy. Yeah. He said, "Try Cave M." He's like, "I want, I want." Okay, new stuff. want some new stuff. Okay, I, I want to. James will see about this, and then we'll pop over to Cave M because you're right. It's for especially for the show. It's good to show off all the levels. Um, so we have another. Okay. This section is called uh, collaboration. Um, he said, "Around this time, I did two things that, in hindsight, were exactly the right things to do. First, I contacted Thomas and invited him to participate in the programming, and second I contacted First Star Software, FSS, the exit. to ask for their permission to work on the game. Mm. And then uh, someone else, I was very impressed, offered my help, and so our collaboration began. And then we have some like screen-splitting demo stuff. It's really dark. I don't think you'll be able to see it. But, man, this is a cool, this amazing little uh, pamphlet here. Okay, so Thomas joined the project in May 2005 after Andrew posted a video on Atari Age showing his work to date. Thomas and Andrew worked very intensely for the following two months. 
Thomas first concentrated on peephole optimizations and was able to accelerate uh, the drawing to the screen buffer quite nicely. He also rewrote a new main kernel and added the score display and wrote the generator, which creates the caves using the board data from the original games. In two short months, Boulder Dash went from a proof of concept demo to a playable game. Holy shit, dude. What the f That's insane. Bunch of butterflies that I need to drop boulders on. Holy shit. Oh, they don't generate diamonds. No, they do. Oh my god. Okay. What a cool level. Yeah. Beautiful butterflies and amoeba. Yeah, there's the amoeba in the top right there that's spreading out and slowly taking oh, over the board. Oh my god. Okay, this is becoming a... a like but a... I have to get 50 diamonds. And my strategy here is to get these guys out. I clear some space. So they have a little bit of room. Then drop a whole bunch of boulders on them. Like, oops. Like that one. Oh yeah, that's happening. Let's see. And the diamonds kind of act as boulders too? I think when the drop's on them are only boulders. It appears to be the idea, Let's yeah. go down and check out the diamonds. Let's get some diamonds. Diamond hall. Okay, I'm understanding how we can get 50 diamonds now. No! No. It's okay. We'll do it again. We'll get it. He says, ooh, hint, amoeba kills butterflies. Oh, okay. Oh. We can try that one out and lead them over. That That's way easier than trying to drop a, drop a bunch of boulders on them. Um. Okay, so Thomas extended the ICC color triplet concept and designed a new color system which allowed each cave to have a unique color scheme. This made a big difference to the look of the game. The system involved switching from always mixing pure red, green, and blue to defining three dedicated colors for each cave. First color being simply the dirt color, the second a mixed color, which oh, together with the dirt color mixes to the main steel wall and boulder color, and the third color is always a bright color, which is uh, complementary to the mix of the first and second color. When all three colors are mixed together, the result is close to white, which is, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah that's, it, does, it, it does look fairly white. Exactly. At least a bright color, right? Yeah. Um, this gives the cave nice, unique, and contrasting colors. Other objects, Boy. diamonds, using the remaining color combinations. These butterflies are oh, right there. Really hard. While I was very pleased with the results, it later turned out that Andrew didn't always agree. So the final <laughs> color mix caused a lot of discussion uh, between two pretty stubborn individuals. This lasted until the very end of the project. It was uh, sometimes uh, pretty exhausting, but in the end, this and other discussions only made the whole thing better. And then uh, the response is, lol, at lot of discussion. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's just the way collaboration goes sometimes, man. Yeah, and it's like yeah. it always makes it better, but that's the thing that's tough, you know. And, and usually the both ideas are good. It's just figuring out, you know, when you're crushing it, if if both people are digging it. I don't like that butterfly right there. I can't. I think you're. Yeah. I think I'll have to dig another path for the um, for the butterflies to get out because I need them to get to the amoeba. That's the thing, but I can't dig it while they're like right in my face. Ooh, ooh. See, I was trying to time it so I could get them there. Maybe I'll dig out the me amoeba first. And dead butterflies turn into diamonds, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thomas and Andrew developed draw algorithms which were specifically tailored to the odd screen layout. For example, draw two characters at once were possible because the same shape is side by side in the same byte on screen. There are quite a few of them, and they're all cycle counted by hand known to the very cycle um, uh, how long most of the draw algorithms take to do their stuff. Oh, I bet. And Boulder Dash is possibly the most cycle-countered game on the machine ever. Mm -hmm. The real innovation which allowed the whole thing to work, this game operates by dividing all tasks into very small processing sub-chunks and running these sub-chunks only when there is sufficient processing time oh available God. to them. So we need to uh, uh, know in advance just how long any chunk will take to do its stuff. All code is cycle counted, and that's all this means, is that when the screen is being drawn, a common thing for all 2600 games, there are certain parts of the display where you have a few cycles spare. For example, oh. during the vertical blank where the TV beam is retracing back to the top of the screen, there's a few places where you can do stuff. So yeah. the system uses a count timer, countdown timer, which is initialized to indicate exactly how many cycles are available in each of these places where stuff can be done. 
Open the bottom left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll open... I'll make some more room here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. I just killed myself. Uh, hmm. Let's just dig out this. Oh, God. Some more. I'll have to release the butterflies from the right-hand side this time. Because I've screwed myself on the left, and I can't even get to them without dying. <laughs> okay. Holy shit. Oh no. I really, really screwed myself again. Uh oh. We'll find out. Hmm. The beast will be released. Oh man. Oh, Yay! No. Okay. okay. Good. Sick. But they're not. Not going away. Too packed full there. You can dig like you. You don't have to go. You know how you can like hold it down and oh, dig. They're gonna. They're gonna come out immediately and. And then just run like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Amoeba. It worked. it worked. Come, come meet my friends. Amoeba. There we go. I hear lots of crashing. This is like alien versus predator shit, right here. Yeah. This is like this is an Let AVP. Let them fight each other. Oh, they're stuck. They can't. They can't get to the amoeba anymore. Oh yeah, it's okay. time to get some of those diamonds, man. Yeah, but are they eating the diamonds? I'm gonna let them fall a bit, actually, because it's very dangerous. Because the diamonds fall on me, <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, that's a good point. But I'll I'll just keep eating away at the diamonds, which probably makes more room for the butterflies to get into the amoeba. How much time do I have? Sixty-three. Holy shit, man. There you go. You want them to come out? That's how you do it. Yeah. There we go. They're released. They should... Ooh, I think you might have blocked it with one of the... Yeah, yeah you just oh, you did. Oh, okay. But it was just right, like... There. Yeah. There. Now they can come in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come I gotta on. get out of the way, though. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hear any noises? Oh, there I hear some noises. But imagine the processing power that has to go on. It has to watch the whole screen. It's crazy, man. Move all those butterflies, move all the amoeba, watch for collisions between any butterfly and any amoeba, all the rocks, all the while that I'm still moving around. I think they blocked themselves again. Ah! And he, and he said, uh, he basically said that's a way simplified overview, of course, but in essence, this game is a multitasking time slice system built on top of a normal 2600 display kernel. Yeah, so most games are able to do all their calculations within each frame. Each frame it displays on the screen, it finishes all the calculations. This is a, an ex excellent example of a game that is constantly doing multiple things all the time in the background. And he shows um, uh, an example of what some of the early stuff looked like. That's kind of... I'll switch it over. Just so you guys can see it. I'll move it over. It's hard because it's inverted. Yeah. And then up a bit. There yeah. we go. So that's he's showing like a little bit of what some of the early some design of the look like and the little responses. Visually not very impressive, but the main structure is already there. So this is, and this is uh, 2005, so I mean, I, this is, what, that's like three years in? Oh, yeah, three years in and still. Because the earliest iterations were 2002, even. So, yeah, that's three years into this process. Damn it. Let's make some room here. Which is just wild, man. Yeah, and then it got released in 2012, so there's still many years to go. And um, in mid-2005, so I guess three years into this project, Thomas redid the graphics, <laughs> which yeah. up to that point were more or less just a stub to test that Andrew's systems were working. Yeah, because the graphics can Whoa, sometimes okay. be separate. I want to show done. you this, guys. This is the before and after. This is very this is very impressive. So hold on. let me. It's so hard to, to, to get it up. But you see those characters? Oh, wow. This is the before and after. So the bottom is before and the top is after. So that's what they were looking at before, I believe. Much more Let detail and much more go. color. You can see in the left, there's only a red and green band of stripe for the boulder. And on the right, there's all three bands of stripes. Yeah. So it has 
much more possibility for different types of color and obviously the main character is multicolored yeah and it looks these look like characters instead of just things that they're testing yeah my internet isn't working so i'm viewing on mobile phone connection already spent a fortune when my credit runs out i'm gone sorry no worries oh, no, andrew it's, man it's all it's all cool do you think sorry to hear that um uh, oh, no, I've screwed myself. and it goes uh, a scrolling algorithm similar to the one thomas used in thrust was added and then Andrew doing a lot of improvements on his side too. It was about time to show the results to some people. And then, oh, and then it went into kind of crowd beta testing. testing. And he calls it the breaks. Um, the project was abandoned by me at least half a dozen times. It's always been a part time thing and sometimes it just takes over your life so much so much that you just have to let it go. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, what does one do and you just blow yourself up you die but we'll uh, go to another level it's good to show these off suicide time that's right but i mean it's good that each of these is a good challenge oh no that's it that's all i can show <laughs> keep going I'll, I'll, I'll we got another um few more pages to go i'll keep reading and, okay um richard um from first star software sent back K some very oh didn't i do k-by guess i did Oh, I oh didn't. shit! How did we skip over that? That's weird. Whoa, this is oh. what the. There's a lot of diamonds out what there. What an inventive, crazy. I mean, it's like seventy-five. And I believe these are all the original levels from the really? original game. Yeah, they were able to include. Oh, there's an exit. It's like an RPG now. My <laughs> God. Okay, what's the catch here? I bet you have to get every diamond. That's the Probably. catch. Probably. It's like, oh well. Oh no. Oh, and then I have to do that one, then I have to push this over. That's right. I can get that one, that one. That'll fall. Get that one, that one. That's easy. Okay. Yeah. So, this is like... Oh, and then I can't get that one. Well, we'll see. You might not need yeah. to get every one of them. Maybe we'll not. We'll find out. Um, we'll go deeper. Yeah. Um, oh, how do you get... Look! It said only 50%. Oh, yeah, because you can't get those. Look. Those are those are trolls, man. Yeah, those are there like, to haha, just try and get it. you. Oh, look at this. Do it. Yay. Look at this craziness. I would never have thought this could be mounted on a 2600. The amount Look of... Look at this... Background calculations that's going on. Let's watch this. Whoa. Below. And the... I mean, it's simple physics. It's like fall to the left or fall to the right based on, you know, X or Y. Oh, this is a fun one. Uh, uh, so... Lots of things happening. So we got Richard from First uh, Soft, um, First Star Software sent back some very positive feedback, and Andrew decided to show the game at the U.S. show. Ah. Um, it must have uh, uh, been the wrong audience. It's unfortunately here the lack of positive feedback was pretty disappointing, especially oh. for Andrew. This caused the first major break in the development. Andrew declared the project to be dead, but Thomas was hoping for the best. And this mm. will show an example of the first public demo, um, which looks very different than what we're seeing now, honestly. Yeah. Um, I can show it, but uh, I think I already sort of did, and we'll keep going. Okay. Um, uh, this break lasted until late 2007, when Andrew became interested again, and they restarted intense coding for another three months until the main gameplay was almost done. Uh, uh, they often ran out of ROM space, but Thomas was able to use his experience from his uh, uh, from his 1K mini games to find extra room. <laughs> uh, uh, then break number two followed, and Boulder Dash was declared dead for the second time. Oh no! Again, Thomas was not prepared uh, to concede that the project has ended. Between the breaks, people often asked um, uh, asked him to finalize the project alone, and Thomas's uh, viewpoint was that he was only collaborating to make it as perfect as possible. So that was never an option for him. Fortunately, Mm. Thomas, um, op oh. uh, 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 fortunately, Thomas's optimism was right. In the mid-2011, the project was resurrected for the final push <laughs> to completion. And then we go into the physics. Ah. Um, Thomas and I worked well together, and despite both being stubborn perfectionists, I think we both have a sense of elegance. That's uh, what I strive for anyway, and many times during our programming, both of us have abandoned our own code for the more elegant code. One of the uh, last things to be added was perfect physics. There's a particular way that the boulders fall in the original game due to the right. scanning nature of the processing of the playfield. The playfield is scanned top to bottom, left to right, to find objects to move. 
to scan a play field which is 40 by 20 characters in size that's 800 characters the system has to load the character decide what it is do some processing based on that i.e boulders have to check if they need to fall so they have to look at the characters below and to the sides of them that's thousands of loads from the play field just to get a single frame of game logic Given each one of these, due to the difficult bank switching involved, would take at the very least a few scan lines of time, including the logic, then, very roughly, a third of the second to require per game loop. Too slow. So the conclusion, it's not possible to scan the board, but every single other implementation of Boulder Dash scans the board, that's just how it's done. But mm. the Atari 2600 version is different. This is the most mm. top secret part of the whole project. <laughs> Because it's, it's uh, baffling, like, how they could get this machine to scan the whole board massive amounts. This version, yeah. Boulder Dash, does not scan the board and yet manages to have exactly the same physics as the original. But what? it's very difficult to achieve, and it was probably the last real bit of programming required for the game. That's the hardest part. So yeah, I, it, dude. I would have thought it would be the first thing you would try and tackle because it's like, well, how do you even do it? That's the whole the whole thing hinges on you scanning the whole board, making sure butterflies are hitting That's amoebas, right. and it uses a stack of objects Active instead of scanning. scanning a stack of objects. Wow. Well, obviously, Listen. much better programmers than most people because that's crazy to do it in the small amount of RAM that's available. Like, it's a huge stack. Active like if you, objects. Active objects. Oh, so there's a static objects and active objects. Wow. And, and he says there was but, a working physics engine early on, of course, but it was not correct physics. So when the last bit of code went in and the physics started working 100% properly, that's the point at which Thomas and Andrew felt the game would be finished. Andrew's significant programming contribution to the game ended in early 2008. Thomas has been a major factor in driving the game to the completion, in particular polish. One of those final bits of polish was the music on the title screen. Yeah, it's wonderful. And he said, and then for the music, we got, luckily the weather during my three-week summer vacation was absolutely terrible, which means that he got to go in and do some stuff. Do some <laughs> oh, music. wow. With the awful weather over the summer vacation, 2011, Thomas had a good excuse to work on the game almost all day long. Until then, the game had no sound at all, so he took this task. Uh, when he was done, the gameplay felt very different, with more senses involved. Um, it had more depth and seemed more responsive, but both Thomas and Andrew were surprised what a big difference some little sound effects made. Music was also added to the title screen. This was a really big challenge, and it took Thomas several weeks to complete. What a relief. And he said, I doubt many people will ever understand what a truly amazing bit of tight coding this is. Firstly, we needed uh, to thank Fred Quimby for his initial music demo. This showed a technique which uh, could produce the digitized music that you hear in the final product. Fred's system was the first step in getting the music system um, interleaved with the title screen. It took Thomas weeks mm. of work to rework the music system and, and mesh it into the title display, given that the title is a complex asymmetrical playfield <laughs> with embedded sprites and cosmic arcs. Uh, 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 Starfield, Starfield yeah. uh, putting digitized music in with all that. It's amazing and probably won't ever be matched. There's not much time left in between what you're doing, like all the sound and the graphics. So we're almost... Uh, we're I still had uh, 24 diamonds to get. And, uh, oh my god, this level is what level? brutal. What I did is got both sides going and flowing. Like, I just went like... You yep, gotta do them, it, man. Get them going, get them all set up. There's no... Look, let them do their thing. Because that's that's the first step, right? You, you don't want to sit there and wait for that. No. Right? Now and then I went into the middle and grabbed as many diamonds as possible. That makes sense. Yeah, because the time display is truly challenging for this game. This this one is all about race against time, because there's plenty of... Oh, no. What the hell? Now you're locked. How did that happen? Fuck. That didn't happen last time. Is there randomness? There must be some element. Must be some element of randomness, because that did not He said, can you grab last. diamonds as they're falling without dying? No. Um, maybe from the side? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That could save you a bit of time. But they can't fall on you. Yeah, so if you go to the side of them and you just sort of try to grab Actually, as Actually, what fall. I could do is go... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, exactly. Ah. That's not a bad idea at all. Guys, we got a new strategy, RC70. Okay, the agreement. 
We're going to find out what the agreement is. Uh, because of the licensing and everything like yeah. that, yeah. We're getting close. In early 2004, Andrew contacted First Star Software to no, discuss the possibility of producing Boulder Dash. You can't. Yeah. It makes no. sense. Otherwise They're in it, action. You can't. Otherwise, it would be a little bit too unfair. Yeah. Um, so maybe I should stay in here? And he negotiated a gentleman's agreement where demonstration videos of the progress of the Atari version could be shown at Atari age, but no uh, binaries or source code could be released. Mm. And they were very cautious, and understandably so. But with my promises to not release any binaries or source code, they gave their blessing for me to show what I could do. Mm. By honoring this agreement over nearly a decade, some degree of trust and mutual respect have been built between First Star Software, Thomas and Andrew. We um, had all shared the excitement of seeing Boulder Dash come alive on Atari 2600 and all hoped for an individual release. In 2011, all parties finally agreed on the terms of licensing and uh, distribution for this 250-unit uh, limited edition. The artwork was chosen as the winning entry of a competition held on Atari 8. Andrew then worked with Andre and Nathan to finalize um, the label in the box. Meanwhile, Thomas and Andrew continued debugging and polishing the game so that there are hopefully no major bugs left. The end? Question mark? <laughs> so here we are in 2012 with the final, with the game finally on cartridge. FSS um, is a co-published with Atari Age, and we have one of the most complex Atari 2600 programs ever written complete. And then he's got some acknowledgments, and then we're done. Ah. He says, uh, uh, we have a number of people to thank for their important contributions to this game. Stephen Anthony was, for many years, being the sole maintainer of Stella. Yeah. He made it the number one Atari 2600 emulator. In particular, the debugger became very helpful during development and saved us a lot of time. Thank you so much, Stephen. Stella rocks. Yes, it does. Also, our thanks to Armin Vogel for the excellent uh, crocodile cart, which made it possible to test the game on real hardware, and who designed the three E bank switch scheme. To Fred Quimby, who um, provided the title game music demo, and also uh, designed and built the very special hardware required for Boulder Dash. Our warmest thanks. Armin and Fred kindly supplied us with the hardware development boards for testing on the real thing. And Richard M. Um, Spintley, sorry, I don't know how to say the name, it's a tough one, um, from First Star Software, was a blast to work with. He um, has always been very professional, patient, and also very encouraging. Thank you, Richard, for hanging in there so long with us and being so willing to negotiate. We're all thrilled with Andre uh, Bolfing's unique competition winning artwork uh, adorning the box. It's something very special. Nathan Strum did his usual magic with the design of the manual box and labels. He has shown superhuman patience dealing with our endless improvements to the text and artwork. Our thanks to the Mark Oberhauser, um, who, who turned design into reality by organizing the printing of the great box we hope um, you will always enjoy at, at On Your Shelf. We must not forget to thank Albert Yeruso who, even though always very busy, found the time to get this game into production and development. Last but not least, a big thanks to all those unnamed people who for nearly 10 years have continued <laughs> to support this game. Each of you has helped make Boulder Dash for the Atari 2600 something we are very proud of. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an amazing accomplishment. I, I almost did it! You still miss a lot of opportunities. <laughs> I think... Are you I... talking about your gameplay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um for diamonds collecting diamonds and it, this one is about racing against the clock and um and uh also making sure you optimize how many diamonds you're getting because i i pretty much covered up all the diamonds yeah. at the end here and i still missed nine wow um and there is some element of randomness because this time there was a diamond I believe blocking the entrance, and last time it was a boulder yeah. blocking the entrance. Yeah. And I think the more grabbing, he says, yeah, more grabbing. I think one of the real lessons from I did from, a little bit at the end from that epic story is just how important collaboration is, how important it is to have a team of people working. Yeah, and that really this is a team sport, you know. And at some points, um, people, uh, some people were pushing other people. It's like, come on, we can do it, and let's go. And, and I relate to that story so personally. It yeah. feels like I've been in so many places like that with projects where, like, you thank God you have people who are excited because you're not excited anymore because you've been grinding for years. Yeah. It's... You've got to get to the next threshold and or get to the next point where you can be excited again. That's right. And, and it, it's very, very difficult, uh, especially with such a momentous uh, project such as That's this right. where it's pushing every envelope possible and like, I, no, there's no i don't think there's any other program as 
complex in calculations as this for the 2600 where there's so many things happening on the screen the things are happening that you aren't affecting (laughs) so was it worth the 75 dollars oh my god yeah 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 it's it's unbelievable and especially when you can't get to level d without going through a b c and then you get okay i've made it to e checkpoint that's now right. I can go E F G H I, um, and then go to I. Yeah, and especially all the little bonuses and this and the, great manual and this story. And you're right about the, the physics, man. Like that needed oh. to be nailed, and that's not yes. a simple thing. This is not like a pong. You know, <laughs> no. this is not like oh, we need to calculate the trajectory a ball goes. Like there's no. so much stuff that's going into this one. Yeah, and and I was I was saying, in normal games, the only things you need to pay attention to usually is what is touching you yeah you as the player in this one there's hundreds of things on the screen that could potentially be uh moving especially in this level if you look at this level i had two cascades of boulders (coughs) and diamonds uh coming down and it has to constantly check how each of those active things as he said yeah either something's inactive or active and he marks it it puts it on the stack and the colors check. of each level make such a difference i love the blue compared to the original one you feel like there's a progression yeah and it, and it's, oh yeah yeah the the colors color schemes like like if i do that i'm just going to show you and it, it's falling down you can hear it still falling down off screen and you write about the sound and i'm doing that this it, one again there's two things falling at the same time on sides, and it's calculating both of those at the same time. Like, how many things are falling at a time? Probably, like, 20, 30 things are active, 40, even. And seamless. We've had no issues with this. No, no, no. It's por- perfect. There's no glitching. There's no weirdness. There's no... Yeah, uh, five different levels for each of these 16 screens. Yeah, um, what did the levels uh, change? It probably changes the amount of time you have. I bet. I bet so. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's a deep game. Let's see. And and a decade worth of work. Difficulty basically. level. Um, the greater the difficulty, the less time you have, and the more diamonds you have to collect. So the pattern in difficulty totally changes. Wow. So that's why there's extra diamonds mm-hmm. that are bonus diamonds because in the difficult levels you have to get those Whoa. diamonds. Uh, placement of diamonds and boulder changes with the difficulty level so you also had to keep all of this in rom the different different styles of different versions of the level and this character design is great man his little foot tapping his little rolling oh yeah so many little details the blinking it's it's and he says on difficulty level four and five you have to start with cave a yeah you can't skip ahead that's brutal so there's lots of Lots of challenges for the expert player. That's for sure. Grand Trooper says, "I own this and didn't know all. I didn't know all of this. Amazing game. Thanks. I need to find some that's, more time to play." And that's why so, having the developers in the chat, giving even more information than you can glean from the manual or what's in the Atari Age forums, right. really, really helps. Why we do the show too? I mean, it's, yeah. it's 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 one of these things in life. So often we just experience the result of things, and we. We yeah. don't get to like really hear about all the hard work that goes into all these like little details, or, or directly ask the questions of the creators of the, <laughs> of the games, like say like you know film Q and As. Like, yeah, not everybody can make it to those. You can't go to Can every no, year. You can't. <laughs> and you want to ask your question, and this is amazing that we're able to um, says, have this intimacy with the developers. And he says source code for the tile engine is now available. Yep. <laughs> completely underused in Sokoban. So what he is, t- what they've taken, um, the the tile engine from this game, is what we're going to look at in the next game. Cool. Is Sokoban. So we will move on. Yeah, to we got to we got to switch over. Um, amazing game. Um, obviously, this is a very replayable one. That oh my god! I need to get through each of these levels at least on level one yeah, at man. some point. And luckily, there's checkpoints. So I can go, okay, I'm going to tackle A through D today. Who, do, who Who is the programmer for, like, the Night Guy in Low Res world? Uh, VHZC. So this is like a VHZC game where James is the one who has a chance to beat it. I don't have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This I could probably... Very, this is a very different type of game. It's it's a lot of puzzling, a lot yeah. of thinking. And um, Tanya might be good at this. Tanya might rock. But she's, she gets a little wary of action games yeah. too much, so... 
Um, actually, that could stay on the screen. Um, so, let's switch over. And we're going to take a look at Andrew Davies' brand new game. Wow, okay. Do you want me to hold down the thing? Uh, no, it's uh, done on... Oh, emulator. That's emulator. right. Emulator. Because it's brand new, and it does not work on the Harmony cart. Yeah, we'll have to trade places because it's uh, we've had issues oh, with the your yeah, the the keyboard. Um, because it's like... Oh, if... Tanya says she's excited to play it. Tanya! Oh, well, there you go. Welcome. I'm excited to hear what you think of the new Tarantino movie, Tanya. Me and James <laughs> were talking about it before the show. We, we, we decided not to talk about it on the show because it's too much. We don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. But I want to hear what you think. Okay. Bikini. So, bikini, bikini, that's oh, bikini in the film. She, I think bikini? this. I think she's referencing something from. Okay, that's my bad. That's I don't remember anything um. special about a bikini. <laughs> she says autocorrect. Okay, oh. good. That's so good, Tanya. That's, that's my favorite thing of all time. Bikini. <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm like totally. Yeah, we're all about the bikini. Um, so good. I said hi. <laughs> that was supposed to what be an a autocorrect. Fun. I love it so That's much. That's way out there. Um, okay, so this should. Yep, there we go. Got Man, that. I, I like reading. That's fun to read out loud the whole thing. Oh, yeah, it's really great background. Okay, I think I've got it. Okay. Oh, Wasp just came in. That's okay. It's okay, wasps. Okay, so this is. Uh, we might want to trade. Yeah, I think so. Because uh, so. we've forgive, had some. Forgive stuff. the wrong naming. Yeah. For the bit. That has been. So a this body is. Oh, it's hot. Oh, your pillow's really hot. Uh, yeah, man. I'm just sweating. Is my pillow hot? No. Oh, my it's God. Give me. me a hot pillow. It's just me. I'm going to flip this over. I will oh recommend God, this it. This is so hot. <laughs> It is warm. I'm a warm-blooded animal. It's 26 degrees in here. Should I hit enter? I don't know how um, to do this. I haven't used the emulator yes. before. Yeah, just, just hit enter. You should be good. Okay. And it's just arrow keys. I've got to turn it down. Cool. He says he can't see the ROM name anyway. Oh, you can't? Oh, it's off screen. Okay. Okay. So how do I? Is just arrow keys, or how do we? Yeah, this is bar? just arrow keys and space bar. Um, so it's just arrow keys. Oh, it's not really doing anything. Oh my god. Okay. Press down. Is this being a pile of crap? Uh oh. Uh -oh Let me see. just see. Okay, let's switch and make sure I can. Okay. Get this okay, going. Get it. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was having trouble with my controller. Some days it's good. Some days it's bad. Um, so you're going to see in real time. We are solving the problems of the game. So let's change it back to joystick, and I bet it'll work on the keyboard, which is totally weird. That's hilarious. Oh, no. Oh, it's not working. Oh, no. Like, the reset's working, of course. Get out the joystick then. Yeah, let's try that out. Never know. Hot off the press, friends. It is. It's not the. The Games Art just gave us 25 somethings. Oh, thank you, hey, Games Art. 25 bits. Cheers. I appreciate that, man. Greetings, fellow nerds. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, welcome. That's, that's who we are. Uh, We're just you. You currently faded in on us trying to like get our emulator to work. <laughs> we normally play on hardware exclusively, so and this is yeah. a new one. So we're trying to do very this. rarely. Um, it's always a bit of a challenge. Seriously, <laughs> you just missed the best part. Oh, did I pick the wrong one? Bits are worth a Not penny each, matters. so two bits. Hey. Okay, we oh, got the keyboard working. Dude, that's all we need. Do we have the controller? No, that's all. Okay. 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 So I completed level one for you. Oh, yay! Wait, I'll be lost. <laughs> so, uh... I know. Use keys, joystick. Right? Oh, it's hot again! Whoa. There you go. Okay, you're pushing... You're the, you're the square. You're the... 
um, the plus, I guess. Oh, interesting. Okay, so those um, brown empty squares are boxes. Okay. And your goal is to get each of those boxes onto one of those squares. One of those flashing squares. There you go. Oh, I see. Oh. That's the whole game. So, there you go. Now, you can also... Um, so, you can only push them. So, like... so, be very careful to not push them into places where you can't push them out of again. Ah, oh, I see. Right? And this will lead you up to harder and harder levels. So, you don't have to worry too much. Nope, you screwed yourself. We are fucked, friends. So, press F. It doesn't have an undo yet, but press F1 to restart the level. Let's try that. Whoa. Ah, uh, no, that's skip level, apparently. Uh-oh. Maybe it's F2. Sorry. There's, okay. I don't Sokobu. I don't Sokoban. Okay, I think, I'm thinking that this is the right way. Why don't I have the... Missing a whole bunch of graphics. Oh god. Oh no, I know why. Okay, pause for a second. Okay. One select next level. Well, music is great. It, hell yeah, man. It's very yeah. good music. And there's an ice cream truck outside. <laughs> it's a hell of a day, friends. <laughs> it's a hell of a day. Proper. Like so this is running. This is running off Stella. Um, so this is uh, Sokoban, uh, 2019 work in progress by Andrew Davy. First posted about on July 14th. Um, this build is from today, like two hours ago, uh, three hours ago. Very very new. The size is uh, 32k um, because there's lots and lots of levels. Um, and I already read off all the other games he's done. Uh, the one we just played, Boulder Dash, uh, QB as well. Um, and you can download this. You can download this game in the Atari Age forums. So uh, his first post about it, he posted about this on s Sunday? This past Sunday? Well, here, well, after all these years, here it is. I'm talking about the source code for the tile engine developed between 2003 and 2011 by Thomas Jentz and myself. Uh, Yinch, uh, the one used in Boulder Dash, and now, of course, this implementation of Sokoban. Thomas and I spent many years perfecting it, and we're both extremely proud of the work we did on that one. It wouldn't have been nearly as capable without both of us contributing, and I would like to emphasize that we're equal partners in the code. I've spent quite a time making sure that this code is just our tile engine, and nothing but the tile engine. No IP belonging el elsewhere is included in the engine code. In other words, it's a pure, generic, character graphics display engine for the 2600. But on top of that, I have used it to implement a ver version of Sokoban. This one comes with a hundred levels pre-installed for your playing pleasure. This is, again, NTSC only version. I have sourced the level data from online. Credit and thanks to Lee J. Haywood for the level design. 
Oh, it's so much said. I think you oopsie. There you go. I sure did, <laughs> and then I like solved it somehow. Uh, you can read his copyright notices in the license directory. They're uh, roughly in order of difficulty. So it starts out really, really simple. Like, as in, you can't make a mistake. And now it's getting to a point where it's, uh, you gotta think a little bit. I'm trying to, like, wrap my brain around this one. I think... I think Some I of them, know. you can only do so many moves. Like, right now, you have three moves possible you can do. Yeah, I'm just One will screw you if you put that one on the left down because you can't get that band back up. Yeah. The next one, you can move down, and it's fine. You probably have to move it down again, but then you can't move it back up. Um, now this isn't a complete game, of course. It doesn't have all the polish out, like, of complete sounds, take back, title screen, save key, start at any level, etc. Oh, but it's good enough yeah, to show how the like... tile engine is used and written. I'm sure some are curious about that alone. I'll probably keep developing developing Sokoban, perhaps at a less hectic pace. In particular, the Sokoban code is unpolished and still work in progress. There's a lot of in-development code sitting here and there, so expect that to be part of the change regularly as I update. I do ask you respect all the appropriate licenses and copyrights contained therein. I think it got, I got it all correct. Please PM me if you see issues. As always, I really like reading feedback, especially on this one. Enjoy. Don't forget to look around using the button and joystick direction. So this has the same look around as uh, Boulder Dash does. And so he messaged me. He said, under two weeks from a, hey, wouldn't it be great to have a Sokoban on the 2600 to a working version that doesn't look too bad with 100 playable levels. Oh, you did it. That took me a little while to figure that one out. So that's not too slack. Well, this one looks a little bit easier. We shall see. I'll do a few improvements before your show version, which uh, he did. This is a very up-to-date one. Uh, hopefully, I will have the take back working by then. Unfortunately, he didn't have it, but that's fine. You can reset. Um, it's pretty, still pretty simple levels so far. So, having not having the take back is not too bad at this point. But when it gets really complex, then it's like, oh boy. Hmm. It's not as easy as this one looks. Oh, I think you got it. Yep, you did. Yeah, it just took me a little bit to like think about it. I was like, what are Games are said, bingo! Whew! That's a bingo. Thanks, friends. This uh, is, uh, this is like definitely you're watching me expand my IQ. Right <laughs> well, there's only one move you can make. I love it when there's only one move you can make, and then it's like, oh, good. Now there's pretty much only one move you can make because the other ones will screw you. If you push that to the right, you're screwed. Push it to the left, you're screwed. There you go. Um, here's a prettier version for you to use on your show today. I'd hope to get more functionality in, but I ran out of time. Anyway, who can complain about more colors? Uh -oh. Enjoy. Yeah, it's really nice color. We are fuck. And you can see he's using the same um, engine of colors with the three combination color lines. Um, to color things, and, and it drops in and out of the colors each each block. I think this is the way to do it. I think. Games R says this is cool. Yay. Good job, Andrew Davy. Oh, you did it. Yeah, it just took me a second to like figure out that I needed to set myself up. Because a lot of Sokoban implementations on the 2600 are like literally blocks. Like there's no graphics really to speak of. And in this one, your character, I mean, it's a plus right now, but obviously the graphics will be updated later to be, um, you can push that down and then eventually go around and push it back up. I think, I think I might have messed myself up. I think so, because you have to go around and push that guy to the right. Yeah, for sure. I think that's like the idea. It's tricky though. Well, you only so have one like, move. I have to do this. Then I would go down and around. And what? Yeah, I can push him over and then go up. Yeah, I know. Up, over, push that one to the left, push that one down, then go around. Ah. Uh, uh, no. Oh, yes. There you go. Yay. Oh, hi. Atari's Atari. oh, coming to say hello. Rubbing on my leg. Oh, it's so sweet. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to read a little bit about the history of this type of game. Uh, this one is video of latest version of minor update flashing target squares, which help a lot. It's like the ones that are done don't flash, and the ones that aren't done flash. I think that's a little bit more visually helpful. Alright, I'm lay down. The games are oh, put a little squiggly tentacled octopus on the screen. <laughs> Um, so let's read, let's learn a little bit about the history of Sokoban games. Because I don't really know the history. I know there's been tons over the years, like, all the way back to, like, Game Boy. I don't know if it goes further back than Game Boy, but, uh, it's around the 80s. Sokoban was created in 1981. So that was before the NES. And obviously before uh, Game Boy. Uh, it's, it means warehouse keeper is a type of puzzle game in which the player pushes crates or boxes around in a warehouse trying to get them to storage locations. Uh, it was Dude. created in 1981 by no. Hiroyuki Imabayashi, Imabayashi and published in December 1982 by Thinking Rabbit, a software house based in uh, Taka, Takarazuka, Japan. The rules, the game is played on a board of squares where each square is a floor or a wall. Some floor squares contain boxes, some floor squares are marked as storage locations. Players confined to the board may move horizontally or vertically onto empty squares, never through walk walls or boxes. The player can also move into a box which pushes it into the square beyond. The boxes may not be pushed into other boxes or walls as they cannot be pulled. I feel like this inspired Pengo's gameplay. Oh, for sure, when you're pushing ice blocks. But in that one, the ice box slide and kill creatures. But definitely, it was Pengo was inspired by Sova. It's a hard level, man. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this level. Not many things to do, but I guess if you make one wrong... Or... Yeah, that one's pretty nice in that spot. That one over. Sort of. I think I'm fucked, though. Oh, you are. Because as soon as you push that one over, you can never get it back. Oh, maybe not. You can push... Because I got if I go down here, I go down here. Yeah. Go down here. It's like almost done, <laughs> but not. In this it's game, it's not never almost done. You just screwed do it. it up. So the first Sokoban game was for the NEC PC 8801, which is a Japanese computer. Uh, it, it eventually did come out uh, in the U.S. on a PC on 1988, but I'm sure it came on another platform before that. Uh, published uh, by Spectra Holobyte for the Commodore 64 and Apple II in 1988. Hmm. I swear it came out before that. Maybe not. So I guess the Game Boy is a lot older than I thought. When did the Game Boy first come out? 89! Oh, okay. No, no, no. That makes sense. So 88 would be the first U.S. Give it up. No, no, no. I'm not I'm trying <laughs> to like, think about like this, this. Sokoban was a hit in Japan and sold over 400,000 units in that country by the time Spectra Holobyte imported into the U.S. That's pretty good for back then. <laughs> Scientific research on Sokoban. Sokoban can be studied using the theory of computational complexity. The problem of solving Sokoban puzzles has been proven to be NP hard. Further work showed that it was significantly more difficult than NP problems. It is a P space complete. It is also interesting for artificial intelligent researchers because solving Sokoban can be compared to automated planning that need to be done by a robot moving boxes in a warehouse, like literal real boxes in a warehouse. Uh, just going in circles, friends. Game Czar says he thinks he sees the, the solution, oh. but it's really hard to, you know, type it out. Yeah, man. So it keeps track of your uh, number of moves in the top right. Uh, it keeps track of the number of things left you have to get in the top left, I think. We'll find out in a second whether it changes from a 3 to a 2 doesn't show what level you're on, but that's not too relevant. Yeah, it does. Okay, so it shows how many you have left. 
which would be a lot more... Um, Andrew Davies says, let's pretend this level doesn't exist, and you accidentally hit select. Where's F1. So F1. Ooh, oh, oh, oh hey, you guys. did it. Good job. Oh, my God. I killed it. Oh, there you go. That's one. But if I can't get that one, I don't know how <laughs> well. That... They're in approximate hard order. Yeah. Not... This one seems all about getting that last box. Yes. Getting to it somehow without screwing yourself over. And and getting that box moved down. One or two. Don't forget you can center or shift the screen around. Yeah, the the tile the, the screen hasn't been too big yet. I mean this one it goes off the screen a little bit but you do see the whole play of field in this one. Try that, just show off Andrew Davies' implementation What's of moving that? it around. Holding down the space bar and then moving it around. Oh, that's great. That actually helps a lot. Because then you can see the whole board. It gives me a sense of like what we're doing here. So that, this one was a little bit off the screen. It's not an action one, so you don't need to have it reading every every millisecond. You're making it sweaty, man. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's an so intense, I, there's I an need, intensity to I need thing. to get to that. So I need to make a, uh, an opening. Yeah. Um, I don't want to cover up those two with these. So how do I make an opening? By moving one two in, this one needs to go there for sure. If I move this one down, I'm stuck. Oh boy, this one is hard. Boards can get a lot bigger. He says, "Yeah, I'm just gonna play around a bit." Wow, this one is seemingly simple. Well, they're all seemingly simple, <laughs> and then they take a little bit of time to like figure out. Because how do you get? I got an idea. Actually. Yeah, that's not it, <laughs> is it? Because that just screws it up. Okay, what's obviously? No, I have to do this. Yeah. Okay. I can't move that one too over have to move it only one over. And I have to move it over to get to that bottom one. This one does end up there. That one does end up one over. That one does end up one over. The one on the right hand has to go one down one or two. Uh, it's not going to be two because you can't get that bottom one up. So that bottom one lives there. Yeah. That one that's by itself lives down one because you can't get around the right hand side. Ramping up in difficulty, you're on about a level six to a hundred uh, out of a hundred. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but this is also one of those games that's like tough twitch. Uh, yeah, it for is. Sure, because it's like you're just watching us try to figure out a puzzle, man, <laughs> which is like really fun for us, but yeah. might not be like the funnest for you. We'll see. We'll see. It'll work out. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I could. No, I got it. I got it. Yay! Fuck yeah! Woo! Ooh. I knew there was something that had to be moved and moved back, but I was like, where is cool. that? Like, be once, done? You, once you figure it out, it's, it's like, done. Yeah. Boy, this one's a case of moving things over again. Yay. Mm -mm. Uh oh. Screwed it up. Damn. I think I kind of got the idea. It, is... it kind of works off of the last one. It's 
top one in first, then the third one down. Well, that was for the last one. Oh, okay. Not this one. <laughs> okay. He's helping us out, though, which is good. Yep. Man, this is like, this would be killer for the iOS, man. Oh, yeah. On your I phone. Think it did you go to the bathroom or you're on the plane <laughs> or something. Especially if you can just keep continue and start off from the level you were on and it's like, can't you get could that work, one. You could work on this thing for months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially a 32K game with like 100 levels. So it's, it's good that you have a level skip, but definitely would need a level select. Yeah. Because unless you use the, um, um, the save key. Oh, this is camera. Oh, he said he would just, there we go. Camera too hot. Erlen is too close to the camera. That's yep. right, man. I'm just eating up everything. Yeah, save key would be great so you can auto start in the last level. Yep. Off. Yep, off and back on again. It's and such a hot game. It is. Right, we're going to wrap it up soon, I think. Yeah. Because I think we've uh, explored this. Let's just take a look through. Um, you just have to turn it back on again for the best. Hope that it's been off for a while. And press the play button on the back. to see bottom it's uh bottom right there you go excellent then zoom in a bit good perfect Yay. Nailed so it, friends. maybe also pass pass way codes way, way, way. yeah because you also you know maybe you want to make it like boulder dash so you have to earn your level um, so implementing passcodes for people who don't have a save key is, is a good option because not everybody has a save key. So you could have something um, go on the screen through like left difficulty or right difficulty. You press it and it'll have the, the code on the screen or something like that. Yeah, once every 10 or 20 levels. I think a 10, 10 levels would be a good... Well, let's trade spots. Cause oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you, you will wrap up soon anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Back to so the heat. Huh. So let's just take a look through some of these levels. It adds more boxes. Get play fields get a little bit bigger. There's a game which is um, nice colors. I used to play all the time called Taxi, which is like you have like this, like you have Here a bunch of different like uh, buses oh, and like yes. cars, and you have to try to get the taxi out. Thomas Yance made a game like that. Yeah, it's cool. I can't remember. Like get out or something. Yeah. Maybe. But it reminds me, it's a similar mind thing where you have to sort of like wrap your brain around how all these things integrate. A 500 digit pass code should be sufficient. That's right. Would, yeah, that, that'd be frustrating as hell. That would work. <laughs> to resist. So does it say what level you're on? No. It just says how many things are left. I wonder if you're good put the level number somewhere. I mean, that'll have to be there eventually. Probably maybe flash on the screen. Jam, that's it. That's thrust. That's uh, Thomas's game. So I'm, I'm guessing these just get harder. They don't look harder, but there's probably like oh, multiple man. moves. Definitely. Like, look at this one. The board is a lot bigger. Just a lot more to wrap your brain around. I like what they're talking about in terms of like, uh, it's this, this game is that's like, um, relationship to AI is absolutely, I can absolutely see oh, that. Oh, yeah, because there's so many possibilities. It's not a straightforward one or two moves. It's interesting. One of the challenges people face with AI is that, you know, the AI only lives in the system, right? Like, it's like a, like a chess computer is a good example where it's like, it's a, uh, it's a deliberate board. A and so it, AI. So, it's, so certain AIs are great. I mean, one of the challenges they have with AIs is that every environment is different in reality. So trying yeah. to create AIs that are adaptable, but that's how you create Skynet. So like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. you gotta be very careful with, with, with these kinds of things. What kind of AIs you're making, yeah. It and you lost it. Uh, yeah, 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 because I was supposed to do that. Anyway, yeah, lots of great uh, level designs here. Because, yeah, if you create a, colors. if you create a world and then the AI only understands this world, if you were to yeah. take it out of a situation, it's screwed, it would have to start again. Yeah, and it has no adaptability. But it also makes sense because if you were to design a warehouse, you could design a warehouse with a specific layout, but you have to know everything then, which is part of the one of the challenges we face with, you know, AI computers. Mm -hmm. it's so interesting, though. Oh, it's such a yes. cool field of study. Yeah, I mean, I'm, sure. I'm by no means an expert, but I remember um, 
we studied it a lot in cognitive science when I was taking that class because it was that's a huge part of the thing is how much is our brain like a computer how how are yes. computers processing the world all that stuff's fascinating shit oh yeah I'm so blown away by Andrew Davies um uh uh, work and was it is it Thomas as well on, um, on the last yes. game on this on the last game and this game on this he game contributed to the incredible amount of work man it was just it's just brilliant I'm, I'm I feel so humbled and like blown away by getting to really like hear the behind the scenes and reading through this epic saga of like taking breaks and pushing through and like oh, you know yeah. what and Unbelievable. it's and you just see the end result and you just think oh game but like the reality <laughs> is is like there's is anything but that it's a decade worth of problem solving to create something that's really like you know potent and powerful yeah and you know sometimes you even need to take breaks so that your brain can figure out that next step correct um if you're working 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 there's no downtime for you to solve these problems um so it's it's not a it's not a simple thing no um and one of the greatest things you can do is is is, is take a walk and come yeah, back yep yeah. um some people walk some people run some people get their best ideas in the shower it says okay so now think about how the new co-processor somewhat makes us feel deflated <laughs> yeah man I, I do get it but... where you put all, all this work and try and do these workarounds and then Somebody says here hands you something that says, "Oh, this will do all the yeah. hard work for you." But imagine how samurais felt when someone came up with an AK forty-seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, long but range, that, all the training. But that doesn't take away the beauty of, no. of and how you do one thing is how you do everything. So, like you know, learning how to master something within this framework, it's just a new framework. Yep. But and I it do. It depends if the challenge is, is is it for you? Is it is it, are you doing it for you? Because you're obviously programming on a 2600 for the challenge. Absolutely. Otherwise, you would be programming for a modern PC that more people have. That's right. You, so the thing is, you are doing it for the challenge. It's about elegance. Yeah. For sure, man. About completing something that looks beautiful, plays beautiful, and beautiful code that really is... Yeah, we have our own, each have our own views of what that means. Yeah. Absolutely, and one doesn't take away from the other, which is so great. I'm so yeah. happy that that you exist, that you know that yeah. Champ Games exists. Yeah, that, everybody that everybody's doing their own these niches and 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 everybody has their own view, like he said, um, of what a challenge is. That's right. Some people want to work within 4K. Some people want to work within the RAM. RAM. There's like a, a sequence of about 10 RAM only games. Yeah where it doesn't use anything but the RAM to, to make the game. And you're totally right that like you do reach a point with any project where you look at this and go, oh man, I liked my stuff, but actually there's something more elegant, and you have to go with the elegant solution. <laughs> yeah, you I, do, yeah. To, in, in, at least in the creative world, to me, I, I've said this on the show before, but I think strong, simple, specific. If you're strong, simple, and specific about a choice, yeah. it's going to be interesting, and the, that's a powerful combination, and that's an elegant combination when something's strong, simple, and specific. And it translates well to an audience, too. Totally. Whether they're playing a game or watching a movie, they can look at Boulder Dash... Uh, and if they have an understanding of the 2600, they go, and and also that it doesn't have any extra yeah. hardware other than RAM um, in it. And um, it's, they go, wow, this is unbelievable. And it's much like a stage magician. You know, the audience is yes. just wowed by the magic. And then when you become maybe a magician yourself, you're maybe not wowed. You're wowed in a different way because you see behind the curtain. And that's why card tricks in and coin tricks and ball and cup tricks still persist because they are simple and elegant that's right and people understand them and and why you know the big spectaculars of making the um like the statue of liberty disappear not everybody's doing that that's because right because those simple things still do work um and and they're still as impressive because you need to have the skill to still fool people and still fool other That's magicians right. with these simplistic uh, yeah. things, these tricks. But they're not simplistic. They're unbelievably hard and take decades of work to make it look simplistic that's right and that's what you know you look at boulder dash like and, a, and you go oh it's been made for 20 other systems or like every a, other system but it's never been made for the 2600 because it's 
so hard to make it for that. And when you watch like a like an athlete at the top of the game, like oh, a comedian yeah. doing a set, it feels effortless. Comedian it is a better feels example. Feels like you watch them and it's like, oh my god, it's I just. I could have so... told that joke. Mm, no. Could you could have told it because he's already done it, but could you have come up with it? That's right. And could you have executed it in the way he did it? And found that way to sort of do it, and it feels effortless from yeah. the audience's perspective, but but there's so much respect to have for people who truly like go into the weeds and try to figure out like the, the angle at it, and it's amazing how often we just experience the result of other people's work. I mean, literally, we spent, what, an hour and a half on someone's decade worth <laughs> yes. of work. Yeah, and, and, I, and um, I feel Oh, and, we have to do more. We have to do more. That's right. And that's very humbling and beautiful. So thank you for sharing your game with us. And thank yes. you for like you writing such a beautiful mock-up about like all the challenges you went through. It's interesting for me, I think, as a creative, I actually love your game more now that I understand this sort of story that's behind it. I, I have an emotional connection to it and you and the game because of that. And I think um, that's what we strive to bring on the show and why we love the developers being here. Because they give a bigger picture yeah to what goes into these games um the stories behind them how long it took them the technology they use the technology they struggled with and that's why i love the 2600 yeah because you can't you could just throw sloppy code at a modern computer and it has enough horsepower to just power through it and run it but you can't be sloppy <laughs> with the 2600 you have no time it does everything in real time it doesn't it can't slow down to 20 frames a second while you're doing calculations in the back, That's right. right? Because it's constantly updating. There is no screen buffer. Imagine bringing, right. uh, what, Boulder Dash, the cartridge back in time and just uh -oh. popping that in in, like, the 80s. Just, you just blow people's minds. Hilarious. And I mean, that's what happens with every game that we do. Mm -hmm. Just imagine going back in time. Especially with something, yeah, you would be... You'd be loaded, Andrew. You'd be yeah. just loaded. Very, very rich. That's right. Um, because that's also a challenge um, that Andrew Davy takes on and a lot of other programmers. Very few people use the coprocessors. Yeah. And they love working within the confines of what was available back then because of that factor. That this could have been made in the 80s, the early 80s. You know, whenever they put out you know the extra ram on the on the cartridge like the early 80s not 1977 yeah. when it first came out they only had 2k or 4k games but if I tanya's mean, watching she's jealous right now man of all the cat cutting <laughs> of, pe of pixel just this to sit is, here for like minutes yeah, he's yeah this so... is super rare that he puts up with this and he's just in he's just in the right mood yeah man He's and he's going back and forth. Oh, need some love from you now. And it's not even close to Dude, like, this has been a, time. It's been like a year of work to get this shit to go. I'm <laughs> to not work up to this. If you were to come here and see this cat, you'd be like, yeah. oh, this is crazy. Oh, 6.15 a.m. Well, oh, my God, Andrew. Thank you for staying oh, don't up thank all us. night, thank man. Thank you for making these two amazing, beautiful games. These puzzle puzzle action and pure puzzle games yeah elegant is the word my friend yeah, and thank you for staying elegant. up all night hopefully yes. you get some rest and um yep. we appreciate you um in your aussie <laughs> land we yes. sort of mix it up with uh new zealand initially it's <laughs> yep. great to have you here and, and it is thank you for all the hard work and and, and, and thomas's work as thomas's well of course work. we don't want to discount that Hell yeah, um, and the collaboration that, that uh, your forth. whole team yeah. put, and also writing down in such elegant terms all of the different... Uh, the, yeah, the story. So, And I yeah. feel cool that I got to read your story uh, out loud yeah. today. That was a lot of fun. It was wonderful. And obviously we're going to revisit Boulder Dash in the future and Definitely. tackle these levels and make sure we get through all the levels eventually. Mm -hmm. Like um, At least get it to the checkpoints. Like We'll have a day where we're going to get through to level E. Mm -hmm. And then get through to level blah. That's so right. it will return. And we will get it done. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, so coming up uh, on Friday, uh, we're going to be playing uh, Championship Golf. Cool. Uh, it's actually re been renamed to Pro Golf now, so I do need to rename Sick. that. Sick. Is that um, a Tanya or Darcy Day? Uh, that is a Tanya Day. Sick. So she hasn't played that. And it's got two players. So we're going to play two-player golf. Really good golf game. Uh, we're going to play Mardi Gras, which is Arena Foot's game. Arena! Which he made in conjunction with somebody else whose name I don't have on me right now. Yeah. But obviously during the show we'll be reading that out. And it's his first game, I believe, Arena Foot's. Because he came up with the concept and the other person I'll made the it. game. 
And thank you, Games R, for the for the, the little the bits. thing. It's so great. The twenty five. Let's see what that actually is. Oh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. We'll figure it out. It's a cheer, I think. Cheer. Okay, cheer to take number. T oh, cats. Dude, pixel. I know you're in a very nice mood. You must have gotten into some catnips. Um, uh, catnip. Um, he said and, twenty-five cents. Oh, twenty-five cents. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Repentless VG says great that's, games. Thank you. That's totally on brand too. Popping a quarter. Yep. So good <laughs> for a, for a video game. That's <laughs> I exactly love it, man. the right amount, thank right? You. Um, and we're gonna uh, try for the patch challenge for Ooh. Pitfall. Uh, hopefully we can make it. Uh, I'm pretty confident of that one because it looks like you can get the score within five minutes. Amazing. So I think that one's very, very achievable. Uh, we did earn the patch for Mega Mania last Friday. Did really great. He says, now you can play a game of Asteroids. Yes. Correct. I'll take it to my uh, local arcade where I visit. and it's a, it's a free play. So I'll pretend I put a quarter in. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, a, a break is coming up. We have three more shows till a short break. I think it's about two weeks. Because uh, I'll be in uh, Dallas, Texas. For Amazing. all the people that are in Dallas, Texas. I will be there for my film festival. It's a women, uh, women Texas film festival where my documentary, award-winning documentary, will be showing. Right. Um, it'll be lots of fun. I'll be doing a and a there. So if you want to come watch the film, I will be there. If you live in the Dallas uh, area i'm not sure on the demographics if anybody lives in dallas That's right um, pixel is the best show mascot ever atari tries but pixel is yeah i had fun watching you fight the caves mm -hmm. yeah it's difficult we had fun i think al lives in texas militant uh, daryl spice is, jr is, is in lives in texas but i'm not sure of the city i think they live in austin maybe dallas i'm not sure but somewhere somewhere around there Pixel is the best show mascot ever. Yes. Is he on the camera there? He is. Look at that. Right <laughs> centered. That. He found his frame. He found yeah, his light. He's he got his uh, first position there. Nailing it. Yep. He's in a very good mood. Yep. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to uh, Thrust26, Impaler26, RC70, Repentless VG, Andrew Davey, of course, um, and, and Thomas for making this happen, getting the uh, Boulder Dash to us. The games are, um, let's see, Dan AVC. Uh, hopefully the chat's better now. Nobody Impaler. seemed to complain. Impaler 26. Six Sweet came in. Tanya came in for a second to say, Bikini! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ground Trooper. Uh, Splendid Nut dropped in as well. Always good to see developers. Deanoid. Um, with Amoeba Jump. Developer of Amoeba Jump. Thank you, Deanoid. Always great to see you. His game's coming out at the uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Great show. Thank you very much, Thanks. Dan ABC. And we always have fun playing games. So we'll see you on Friday at 6 p.m. That's probably better for Australia time. Probably, yeah. It's probably wraps around to the morning. Uh, yeah, so it's six hours ahead. Oh, yeah, that's like mid-morning. Yeah, so Andrew Davey can watch, watch the 6 p.m. Friday shows every two weeks. <laughs> that's good. Um, and so we'll be back. Um, he'll be back next Wednesday. Hell yeah. I'll be back on Friday for another awesome game filled show. So thanks for tuning in to zero page homebrew and we'll see, we'll see you next time. See you in a week. Bye-bye.